man. <laughs> Welcome everyone to session one of our Rhyme of the Frost Maiden campaign. Uh, we had session zero, what, two weeks ago, roughly, exactly. Um, and uh, last time, from three different directions, three groups of travelers come together, uh, hearing the sound of a woman's scream over an echoing tundra. Um, yet from the north was Davos and DeQuinn. They had just left Bryn Shander. Uh, they're tr struggling to find work. Um, no one seemed to really trust them. Um, but so they're making their way south to smaller towns uh, that hopefully need more help um, and can still pay. Uh, from the south, Caro and her mentor, Paladin Melandra. Uh, they just had just landed in Icewind Dales, um, trying to adjust to the cold. Horses were giving them some problems. Um, and they're heading to their post, which was actually in Bryn Shander. And from the east, Odaxi, the Loxodon, uh, scrambling to find some medical herbs, there was a wolf attack in Dugan's Hole, which is one of the ten towns uh, in Icewind Dale. And uh, he was looking to find some herbs to try and uh, essentially uh, prevent an infection um, from these two villagers that got attacked. And then all three of you here, uh, this scream echo across the, the open tundra. Um, as you guys follow the source, you come to this, uh, this hill that's kind of hidden, nestled in, a, in like a valley amongst other hills. And uh, on there is a, a post, uh, a woman tied to a post, and a uh, male t figure with broad shoulders um, uh, standing by her. Upon trying to investigate, he throws some sort of icy magical sharpness at uh melandra glancing her side um and the party essentially converges on him to try and determine what the hell is actually going on uh after taking some actually some pretty solid hits um from the team as they came in i guess you're not a team yet from the characters as they came in <clears throat> um he just vanishes and reappears in a space, uh, you know, about 25, 30 feet away. Um, and then sizing you all up, just disappears into the snowy wilderness. Uh, you guys, uh, take down, uh, cut down the woman who's tied. She's unconscious. Um, and while you're trying to really assess and figure out what the hell is going on, uh, three wolves circle around you and attack the party. Um, looking to maybe try to make a quick meal. Uh, they are sorely mistaken uh, when they are... The first one, I think, is beaten to a pulp pretty quickly by Davos and uh, DeQuinn. The second one comes and attacks Melandra, who's injured, but um, Odaxi, Caro, Melandra, even you know Davos and DeQuinn kind of converge on that one. And the third, or maybe it was the second to die probably in order is flung in the air by Odaxi and then pierced by the horn of De Quinn in a weird wolf softball game that uh, that ends with uh, the wolf being impaled. Um, you know, realizing that it's, it's very cold outside, you guys gather up the, wolf, the wolves, um, scrawny as they are, they still hold some meat to them, uh, and begin to make your way east, back towards Dugan's Hole, the nearest town, um, when suddenly uh, Melandra kind of collapses uh, uh, on the way. And, and that's where we left off, I believe. Uh, do you guys have any questions? Why is this happening? Well, that's... Spoiler alert. We'll get there. Um, so I'm going to crank our music back up. A little bit, because for whatever reason, it's not registering for me, so I'll have to figure that out later. Uh, okay, so, yeah, so setting the scene, you guys are essentially right outside Dugan's Hole. You can even see some of the structures in the background. Uh, it's an average day for DeQuinn and Davos. Uh, you guys know that this is, like, normal weather, normal temperature. It's still very, very cold, um, but um, I think it's probably closer to, like... Uh, I don't know, 3, 4-ish p.m. In, in, in the afternoon. Um, Melandra has just collapsed. Kara, I believe you jumped off your horse and like ran up to see what was going on. Um, the uh, unconscious woman is on, one of the, is on the other horse, wrapped in a blanket from Odaxi, I believe. 
Um, and that's just kind of where we left off. So I will leave it to you guys now to do whatever it is you want to do. Carol's just like crouched over Melandra just trying to work out what the hell is wrong with her. Why did she pass out? Just like big white yeah, as, with an exclamation you, point. <laughs> as you run up next to her, uh, she is still conscious. Uh, but she's kind of reeling in the snow, and you can see um, you see some more blood kind of coming out from under her armor, her her heavy chainmail armor, and uh, she's kind of she's slow breaths, trying to like kind of uh, regain her sort of uh, her wits about her, but she is conscious. I think okay. I feel I feel uh, ill-equipped to help with that, so. I feel like we should probably get her to somebody a little bit more prepared in this town. Uh, I could try to investigate from his belt and puts it in his mouth and just starts chewing it. <laughs> okay. Uh, roll a medicine check, a Daxi. Twenty one. Um, yeah, you know, uh, having seen the, the, seen this kind of all take place, even from afar, um, she was definitely hit by something magical. Um, you can approach her and, and get closer and she kind of rears back, you know, a little bit kind of like just move, removing her hand from her, her, her left rib cage. And, uh, there's like, uh, there's definitely like a, a, a hole in the armor where like, uh, something has a projectile has impaled through. And uh, you do see the blood trickle down. Without uh, without getting the armor off, you you realize you can't do much more um, at this point. You have to you have to kind of get her in a place where you can see the wound more directly. Yeah, we need to get to shelter. Let's see if we can help. Uh, you know, uh, well, you you know because I'm telling you, Adaxi, Even though I forgot to send you the sheet that. Um, since you've arrived in Icewind Dale, you're staying uh, at a woman's hut. Her name's Turda. She's a, a short halfling uh, woman, probably in her mid forties, fifties. Hard to tell with halflings. Um, uh, very friendly. She runs a makeshift um, medical facility. She's the only one in the town uh, that that kind of sees to the wounds of 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 other people, other villagers in Dugan's Hole. That's what drew you there. That's you're staying there, and you were giving her a hand when those two people rushed in, uh, causing you to go find um, some medicinal uh, herbs to to fight the infection from the wounded villagers. Ah, then we should bring her to the medicine woman in town, Turda, and see if she can help. It's shelter Lam too, so. I mean, that that sounds right to me. Melandra kind of time. She kind of looks over and she says, "Stop. Calm yourself, girl. Be calm. I'm fine." Uh, You're this, not fine. It's the right call. Uh, the woman, God knows how long she was tied to that post. She may need help as well. So, let's um, uh, head that way. What was what was your name again? She's looking at you, Adaxi. I'm Adaxi, the cleric. Odaxi, the cleric. Well, I guess there's worse people to run into out here in the middle of nowhere. And she kind of eyeballs uh, DeQuinn just munching on, I don't know, where you said you're eating wolf pelts? The berries that I went to. Oh, okay. Um, just a rabbit. But uh, DeQuinn will saunter over and he'll look down at her and start just chewing. He'll go... Little girl, if you die, can I have your horse? Just munching. I'm assuming you're talking to uh, Caro and not Melandra. Not Melandra. Oh. She kind of, in like, you know, you guys probably wouldn't notice it. Caro, you would notice it having spent so much time with her. She like swallows 
a lot of pain and like self writes herself up standing she's probably i mean in full armor she's probably you know like upper upper five foot range she's still what a good two feet shorter than you to quinn yeah she kind of like sets her shoulders back like uh, arches up and 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 writes herself and without really even giving you kind of uh the courtesy of a response she <clears throat> grabs the horse that i think uh she was uh that's that's carrying uh this woman that you guys found and she begins to like f- march forward back into town silly humans coming north ill prepared now we have to deal with it i just Did, does he say that out loud yeah <laughs> Caro is absolutely just going to glare at him. Doesn't and just hop onto her own horse notice. and follow. I'll walk over to Davos. I'll kind of like shake my head as if like a hey man, it's not like socially acceptable, buddy. <laughs> as you guys are marching into Dugan's Hole, I shared with you all uh, the handout for Dugan's Hole. It's a, it's a really small town. Uh, I'll read a little bit more about it in a second, but I think it's probably best to like kind of rehash uh, everyone's appearance just since we touched on it a little bit last session. Um, that session was recorded without any audio, so <laughs> uh, at least on my end. So I guess your character descriptions are there. But so why don't we go back? We'll go from the top real quick. Um, Carol, why don't you kind of describe just your character uh, and what, what, what she looks like? All right. So that's me. Hi. That's you. Carol. So feel Carol to, is. Uh, so feel free to talk about yourself too, if you want, as a you know, as a player. But you know, you and your character, you know what. Uh... Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Hi, I'm playing Caro. She is a human paladin in training. She's um, pretty average built. She's got a very glowing, honey tan skin, very uncharacteristic for this very wintry environment. She's got shoulder length, um, dark brown hair with gold earrings tucked somewhere within the uh, mess of it. She's got uh, plate mail with a red scarf on, very simple red scarf, very simple blue cloak. And on her shield, which she um, has got probably on her back by now, she's got uh, the symbol of tear. So the scales with the hammer beneath them. And she's just kind of like... She definitely doesn't come off the kindest person, but she definitely knows when to kind of switch it on and off, and she is very much, very much devout to Melandra, as you probably have seen in this start of the <laughs> session. And so for the background, you and Melandra have been training together. She's basically been tutoring you, uh, teaching you how to calm your temper some how to how to you know how to approach situations with grace and with uh but still with authority she's a very stern caring person in her own way even though you know she doesn't always show it um kind of like a beacon of strength uh and you guys have both been stationed to kind of come north together um for whatever reason to uh to Bryn Shander so uh following up with that uh i think odaxi why don't you tell us about yourself before we get to the two the two teamsies all right i'm playing odaxi it's a cleric of the knowledge domain uh just an intense seeker of knowledge um a fairly modest demeanor reserved calm um i don't wear much as far as like an <clears throat> extravagant outfit i tend to again it's very modest it's like more more of a monk than a than a cleric would be um the mace is very functional but not adorned uh the shield it would be, it is more of a buckler uh round and bronze but definitely not from around here it's more uh i don't know it's from 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 across the world definitely uh exotic for here but not not adorned like i said um my cleric i cut my cleric training short as i was exiled 
All right, you don't have to get too you don't have to get too deep. You don't have to get too deep. Save some. Yeah, save save some save some love for um for the actual story. Uh, just really, yeah, just really what you look like, your demeanor, that that's perfectly fine. We'll let, uh, we'll let these two pale gray, <laughs> and bald. All right, DeQuinn, you want to go ahead? Uh, yeah, sure. DeQuinn is a seven-foot, stocky-built minotaur. He has white fur, the gleams of blue that go throughout it. Um, and the skin that he has is grayish-blue, and all throughout his body he has bright, um, blue tattoos um, raving up all his body his face and even on his horns that uh, tend to glow when he rages uh, he's been traveling with Davos for a while now um, been well acquainted and he's from a tribe from up north that uh, what would say in hmm I don't yeah, know it's just from uh, up north. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, Davos, you want to uh, you want to take it away? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Davos is uh, looks like a, a pretty run the mill northern human. Uh, probably pretty warmly dressed, considering he's uh, used to being up north. Uh, scruffy beard. Uh, Rough looking skin and is uh, a sorcerer. I've been hanging out with the Quinn for a number of years. Very I'm cool. Not really from anywhere. Just just Roman Roman the plains. Seeing the sights. And another thing I forgot to add is that his horns are immaculate, shiny, and always in perfect conditions. <laughs> always. Always. It, if the sun, if there was a sun, they would gleam off the horns. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. So you guys are now getting. You guys, you're slowly approaching uh, Dugan's Hole in all of its glory. Um, it is not a. Uh, it's not the the the, the most well receptive, beautiful town you've ever seen i mean carol you're from uh water deep you've seen you know it's one of the most immaculate towns the largest you've ever and one of the largest you know on that coast um it it's at best maybe holds i think like you know probably like 50 people it's it's shacks um you know cobbled together just to try and prevent the wind from freezing people to death um it's uh it's it's pretty tiny and uh odaxi you know this from kind of staying there the night before the townspeople are a little weird uh you know they are um friendly-ish you know friendlier than you probably get being you know of of loxodon kind of a uncommon uh uh site for a lot of people uh but they're just you know they're just a little they're just a little off but you know they appreciate help and um uh, since you you are staying at Turda's hut, she's she's very friendly, uh, probably more normal than the rest of them. Um, it's it's a different atmosphere for for most of you. For DeQuinn and Davos, you've kind of seen this before. You've mostly stayed in the northern towns, so the southern towns are a bit new to you. But um, uh, yeah, this is you you both would know the smallest town of all the ten towns, and um, not like the most hospitable in terms of like comfort and luxury by any means. Um, Turtis huts about, uh, I don't know, like two or three houses uh, in from the West. Um, I don't know. It, it, the, the option is yours. You guys want to head straight there? Is there anything you want to do on your way in? I think given the condition of both of our injured, we should probably head there immediately. Agree. So yeah, as you guys steer your way through uh, through the the ramshackle huts uh, of Dugan's Hole, um, you notice that there's not many people, if any, actually walking around. Um, you guys get the sense that that the cold is so kind of uh, ferocious that uh, 
people spend as little time outside as possible. There's no hang, there's no loitering outside for fear of of getting frostbite. Especially the past couple years, it's been it's been pretty brutal. Um, Church's hut is uh, is uh, about um, one of the larger structures uh, in the entire village. Uh, and as you approach, you can see it's two stories um, from the outside. It kind of it actually almost dwarfs a couple of the other structures around. You would probably mistake so I can it. stand normally inside. Yeah, you can for sure. Uh, I mean, you're still you know closest probably to the top floor. Yeah, but it's it's uh, it's a large place. It's a place where uh, uh, again, like people are are brought to be patched up. Turta, as you kind of determined, Adaxi, uh, she's not like professionally trained in medicine but she's the caretaker of kind of the town so what she's learned she's learned like on the job uh on the job uh training and she's outside kind of wringing out cloths um and like uh and trying to like dumping dumping some sort of mysterious liquid on the side she sees you coming kind of waves you down and then drops her hand as she kind of realizes that there's people on the back of horses that are seemingly unconscious and she's kind of curiously looking at you. She, Oi! Uh, what? I thought you went to get herbs. Yes, well, didn't go as planned. I do have the Dittany, but we now have some compatriots that need help. All right, come on in, come on in. To, uh, bring the horses around back. There's a, a, a makeshift stable. Uh, we, can, uh, we can try and run some hay out there, I suppose. Um, but come in, come in, come in. She kind of shuffles you inside. Uh, as you walk in, you, 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 you see this, uh, this kind of open, uh, open, there's like an open little foyer area where you can like take off some gear, some coats, and you can see there's a coat hanging, some shoes. Um, immediately to your right, you see, uh, there's just four beds in the middle of kind of what an open, like, half dining half sort of living space um the beds are are well kept but uh in one of them there seems to be uh uh a, a, a body of a man just unconscious laying in bed um odaxi you expect to see a second person because uh, you know there were two injuries but that person's no longer there Uh, De Quinn will probably like take two steps in. Mm. Davos, I'm probably just gonna wait outside. If you need me, just grab me. Turta kind of comes back uh, from like a kitchen area that's in in the back, uh, and there's like a table. She kind of walks around and she she stops for a minute and like sizes up, you know, glances over at Daxi, looks at uh, this now large minotaur shape in her room, uh, a, a covered man concealed man and these two fully fully armored women and she goes no no that's nonsense nonsense come in come in come in come in it's freezing out there warm up by the fire and she points in the direction of like a fireplace where the four beds are kind of situated around um you know you try to keep these these potentially injured people warm uh no come in come 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 sit down uh take off your gear or whatever you need make yourself comfortable I'll put some stew on, and uh, and uh, uh, yes, come, come, come. Set, set, set the set the the woman over there. They couldn't pick up the woman, the on the white robe, and set her over there. She's wrapped in a, in these blankets to try and to keep her from freezing to death out there. Melanger kind of saunters over near the fire and kind of just sets up there's like a small chair next to it and she slowly like lets herself down and and sits in the chair kind of looking around and sizing everything up well um we thank you for for taking us in at this at this strange uh strange hour caro come help me remove some of my uh remove some of my my plate mail Right away, I'll be doing it kind of like very quickly and 
frantically and just making sure that she doesn't get any more hurt. She'll kind of like, as you start to like, you know, tug at, tug at some of the straps or whatever, she'll look at you, put a hand on your hand, take a deep breath. It's going to be fine. And then, and then let you go. I'll just, I will take a deep breath. It's not going to help me, but I'm just going to try and hide it. <laughs> That's fair enough. Turta comes up to you, uh, Davos, and takes a look at you kind of like from left to right. Well, don't just stand there. Come come stir the stoop. And she kind of leads you to the kitchen. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll begrudgingly follow. Maybe a little confused. <laughs> it's It's very simple, dear. You take this spoon. You shove it in the soup, and you just keep it from burning. And as you look in the, the the soup, it's not not anything to write home about. You've probably had better, but it's got some of the makings of something substantial. It's warm, at least. It's very clear. Um, there's some 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 vegetables floating around in it, but it's not uh, it's not anything to write home about. Hey Davos, there's three wolves outside. You want to add it to the soup? Three wolves? What are three wolves doing outside? They're dead. Nothing. Dead? Mm-hmm. My lord. Are these same Give wolves that attacked our that attacked our friends here? Mm. Might be. Yes. Uh Adaxi, make Oh well, actually if anyone wants to, you could well, I'll leave it to you. I'll leave it to you. Uh Daxi, you know that uh, Dugan's Hole has been kind of, like, they've been dealing with uh, wolf attacks for, for a while now, so... We should just um, show her a wolf and ask if it's the same. Because she saw the attack and I didn't. Uh, well, I didn't see the attack there, but let, I tell you what, bring them inside. Uh, does anyone know how to skin and prepare a wolf? <laughs> I have survival. I have both the work until... Uh... To Quinn, out of, yeah, out of everyone, this is something you've probably done more of, yeah. Yeah. Um, if you want to help him, you're more than welcome to a Daxi. I can give guidance. It's up to you. You're, we'll you're free back. free to do whatever you want. Actually, I don't know. We'll if I can... Just take care of the women. I'm just going to go at the back. And is there a place you particularly want me to gut and strip these things? In the stable, perhaps, or... I know, not near the stable. The smell will probably upset the horses. Um, take them. Take them back. Try to get about a hundred yards away from the house, though. We don't want to attract any other unwanted friends from the uh, the scraps left over. Hmm. I saw a lake not that far away. Maybe I'll put a line in while I take these things apart. If that's okay. What? Well, just bring the meat back so that I can start to prepare or maybe add it to the stew. But if you want to fish, you're the t that's completely up to you. I mean, I, I used, you, I'm sure you're hungry. I've got berries. Just put one on my belt and chuck it in my mouth. <laughs> oh, you've got, um, you've got I berries. Mm, oh, you want oh. one? No, no, oh, no, no, no. Never take berries from a stranger is what McGrand said. Um, but I thank you. Uh... Yeah, get this, get the stew back, and we'll or get the meat back, and we'll throw it on the stew and try to have a heartier meal. It won't be long, but three wolves take a little bit, um, and I'll just go outside, pick up the wolves, and find the safest place to gut. Oh, excuse me, do you have a bucket maybe that I can put? Uh, ah, yeah, there's one in the uh, in the in the first room and. Right from the entrance to the left, there's a bit of like a utility closet with just like some buckets, some brooms, some spare rags, and things like that. I'm gonna grab a bucket. Uh, you want guts for the soup as well? Uh, I I think nothing goes to waste. Nothing goes to waste around here. Lovely, my type of woman. I'm gonna then go outside with the bucket and start preparing these walls. Melandra now has got most of her plate mail off and. She can see she's kind of still holding her side a little bit, um, but she's leaning against the fire and uh, with her eyes closed a bit and, and kind of resting some. 
uh, Odaxi, if, if that's your name, the woman, is she, is she okay? She was <clears throat> pierced by some magic. Uh, have you seen an injury like this before? Uh, Terza is kind of like, like just walking around, putting stuff up. Uh, no, no, dear. We don't, we don't see any, we don't see much magic in these parts. Um, what's wrong with the, the second, the second woman? The, the, who's the one in the white? We don't know. We found her in some sort, some sort of ritual. And now she's been unconscious for the ride back. Is she alive or? Yes, yes, she's alive. Oh, okay. Um, well, keep her, keep her warm, I suppose. Um, uh, yeah, I'll I'll continue making some stew. The, uh, one of our compatriots from before he didn't survive your trip out, um, they've already, uh, taken him down to, to, uh, burn, burn the body and give the ashes to his wife. The other one seems okay, though. He's running a bit warm. Maybe perhaps see if he, if he's got a fever or something. Uh, he, it's hard to tell sometimes. He would stand. Uh, yes. seem to be conscious, but having I'll some issues breathing. The, I'll need to prepare the salve that I got the dish, the didney for. All right. Well, there's. I'll do there's, that now. There's tools in the kitchen. Grab whatever you need. Uh, make a. Want survival or medicine? Just do uh just do do medicine. Yeah. Do medicine with advantage. You know, you're you're trained in this. I forget the key to do it. With advantage? It's kind of working. I think it's alt, but I don't remember to be honest with you. Yeah, but alt yeah. Sorry. Ugh, oh, that's not what I meant to press. Yeah, no, it didn't let me do advantage. From uh, roll 20? Or from D&D Beyond? I'm in D&D Beyond using the thing, and it says hold shift control alt to override, but it's not helpful. It's not, it's not going to work, probably. That's oh, there probably we go. Because D&D yeah. Beyond can roll separately. It, so it probably... it, I don't know why it was just being weird. That, okay. That's the roll. Uh, am I not seeing it on my screen? Let's see. A uh, eleven. Okay. Um. I don't know why it rolled twice. Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah. I mean, you you. It's it's a pretty basic salve. It's it's just um, just something to help fight infection around the wound. It just needs to be mashed. Um mashed up and and you add a little bit of water but you have to you have to boil it just a little bit on the stove to kind of um to kind of make it more of like a, a milky substance um and you've it just applied apply uh to the wound and wrap with the bandage and it should uh it should do the trick uh yeah i did that to then the the injured man yeah, yeah, man. Uh, as you, uh, as you, uh, as you walk over to him, it's 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 kind of he looks very t- similar to kind of your other uh, meetings with the town folk in the area. You can pull up his shirt and 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 on his like his left leg, you can see there's these 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 deep bite wounds. Uh, make a survival check. Okay. Yeah. With that, you're. You know the wolves you fought, and you're looking at the markings for the wool for like that from this attack, um, and it kind of seems like whatever attack these men are actually much larger than the three wolves that you that you dealt with earlier. So it appears these injuries are not from the wolves, or you, they yeah. are. Or- Oh, they're from something bigger. Whether or not it's it definitely doesn't seem to be the because the wolves you guys fought were kind of scrawny and smaller. Um, they uh, th- this doesn't seem to be the same 
hell, you've got a you've got a, a bite on your leg you could look at and compare, and just the the markings and the spacing between the teeth they they don't see the same. Here's the threat we faced is is nothing compared to the attack on the town. Oh, that's Turda kind of walks by and goes, that's that's concerning, I suppose. Uh. Uh. Okay. The Quinn, uh, roll a survival check as well. Let's see how good you are at separating fur from flesh. Oh, sure. Okay, not bad. Um, these uh, these wolves they do seem malnourished, so there's not a ton of meat. Uh, but luckily, you don't really care because you're cooking everything. Um, so you just try and kind of peel the skin back and fillet fillet it away from everything that you can, and and the buckets catching. Just, just every all the entrails. You kind of try to separate out the the ones you know aren't edible. Like that, I just that digestive track is usually a little risky. Um, but uh, but you're able to, you know, get a good bit of meat off. Um, uh, put it on top, and and the rest of the more questionable innards are at the bottom of the bucket. Um, with the. Um, pelts that even though they're mangy I'll want to keep or the best I can go up to the wool uh, horses sorry and like keep one of them warm with the pelts just I know they're not dry yet but with the ice (laughs) make make an animal handling check another one of my strong suits yeah yeah Uh, the horse is still really startled from this whole kind of adventure into Dugan's Hole. They see you try to bring a a bloody wolf pelt, um, a one in each hand of a of a staggeringly large minotaur, um, and they have nothing of it. They start to kind of back to the back, and you can see they kind of get very feisty and they rear back a little bit and start kicking in the air, trying to ward you off a little. Couldn't just take the signs and snort and walk away possibly yeah. put those pelts up somewhere to dry near the um Tertu's house and then uh bring the meat. you would know having probably dealt with these before that they, they you probably need to to put some heat on them um because if the snow from outside continues to kind of like they're not going to dry right they're just going to kind of perpetually be kind of wet and soppy um so you could definitely make a makeshift fire and try to do it or you could use the fireplace inside and try and dry them off some tan like you know like kind of tan the leather some but at least like get some of the 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 rough bits off the backside yeah it's in how it's all ice outside i don't think it would decompose any quicker or anything no that's true do it inside so I guess I would just bring the pelts inside. Um, I'll just bring everything inside and then leave it up to Tata to sort uh, it out. Turta kind of sees you come in and goes, oh, yes, thank you, and takes the, the bucket of bits, I guess as we'll call it, and she goes over to uh, over to the, the stove where the stew is, and uh, you hear uncomfortable or maybe comfortable sounds of sloppy sort of innards uh being dropped in and boiling water i'll let each of your characters decide how you want to react to that but uh she's clearly make, trying to make the most of uh of some of the of the foods and she starts filleting some and you can see her throwing it on salt to try and uh to try and uh cure the meat some um she's I'm working quick, you know, kind of bouncing around from from stove to to stew to checking on you to checking on uh, checking outside, and and she's just kind of bolting all over the place. Dukun will absolutely start salivating, and he'll just go to the soup and say, "Woman, I'll take care of the soup. You look after the people, and just sits there and look after the soup." She goes to strike you with a wooden spoon at uh, at the woman comment, but kind of sensing that you generally mean to take care of the soup, she just hands it over to you rather than wrap your knuckles with it. <laughs> um, 
Caro, as you're uh, as you get the final like chest plate off, and Melandra sits back and takes like a sigh of relief. Um, you do see kind of sticking out of out of her out of her left side uh, rib uh, a a peculiarly looking sharp piece of of blue material, and she kind of looks down at it and puts a puts a hand near it and then pulls her hand right away. Carol's just like she's just going to try and examine it, just try and work out what on earth this might be. I mean, of course it's like of an icy nature, but like it's still a bit peculiar. Um sure, make a um make an arcana check. Uh oh, she's not good at this. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's blue. It's sharp looking, and it looks really painful in Melandra's side. Um, as you kind of get closer, you, I, you just can't really. You, you've never seen anything like this before. I mean, you've seen your share of, of magic, uh, especially in Waterdeep, um, but. Uh, and, but mostly it was of the of the of the healing kind during your training, not of like the uh, or but you know you've seen I, you've seen actually you've probably seen some you know some various different uh, combat magics, but nothing uh, blue like this. Um, uh, Melandra can't like as she like tries to like f- like feel around the wound and like and like touch her ribs. Um, she is like avoiding this thing at all cost, um, and she kind of takes a breath in and goes, <clears throat> a, a, "A taxi, a friend. Um, perhaps you know what this is." Uh, taxi t- takes a few steps over, looks closely at the uh, at the shard, and examines it, and uh, tries to recall any texts that he's seen so you can make a description uh, of this you can make a history check or an arcana or an arcana check if you'd like i'll let you choose uh we will do history my lord nice um i know my books you do know your books um (laughs) This is a a spell that's used to to form ice into a sharp projectile, um, and uh, almost uh, a knife of sorts. Let's just say you know randomly choosing a uh, a sharp blade. Um, oddly enough, though, mostly the projectiles fade or or dissipate kind of after after in contact. The fact that this is still. Uh, prolonged like prolonged like is it still active i guess and still present um and and not melting despite the fact that she's sitting near a fire is is of of some concern um you know this to be a relatively strong uh spell of sorts um especially and and particularly dangerous um so from that you would understand that the person who cast it the, the, the mysterious man with like the steely blue eyes um, he's a formidable, uh, magic user. Um, but it is a bit of a mystery as to why, why it's still kind of jutting out of her, out of her rib cage. Is thing safe to be around? Uh, I'm sorry, who's that? Safe to be around? Yeah, the, the blue shard. Should we be messing with this thing or throwing it outside? Uh... A, a Daxi, you would know that it's it's. It's just it's, yeah, strange that it hasn't gone away. Maybe there's something we can do. I'd like to try to remove it. Okay, so you you go to like to go to to pull it out. Yes. Yeah. I gently. Uh, putting pressure 
on the wound still so that she doesn't you know nothing it doesn't make anything worse i think it's prudent to to get it out uh given the strength of the magic that was used to cast it uh, as you like kind of put your hand there and 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 being careful not to uh not to you know cause any more injury she, you can see she cut quickly tightens up feels a little sense of pain from tightening up relaxes tightens up again she doesn't really know how to respond but she just kind of like looks at you and then like kind of nods and just just do it you know and uh and she waits uh as you go to touch it uh make a constitution saving throw so your saving throws are at the top i believe Uh, okay, with an 18, um, you will, let's see. Um, if, there, if there's a fire nearby, I'd probably just want to chuck that into the fire as soon as possible and not hold on to it very long. Uh, well, as you touch it, before you can even get a, full, a good grasp of it, um, you take two cold damage um, from just the, it's just, it's a sharp pain immediately in your hand, and it almost goes away as quickly as it as it comes because you can barely even feel your hand, and it it surprises you because you know you expect it to be cold, but to to cut into your hand like that, it was uh, you know this is not something innate to this to this spell that you've seen before. Uh, I pull my hand away, then without grasping it. Hmm. This is very strange. That was the woman on the bed. She's just, she's breathing. Uh, breathing in, breathing out. It's the long breaths, you know, you kind of like you would expect someone who's in a very kind of sort of deep sleep. Um but she she does seem to be alive. Uh, is there anything? I mean, abnormal doesn't seem like the right word here because a lot of things seem abnormal. <laughs> you we, can see get the sense that she's just unconscious from from the elements, or. Uh, so you know, you heard a scream. Um, she was kind of unconsciously like hanging from the from the post when you found her. Uh, the robe that she... I'd say, well, make a perception check. Or invest... Actually, make an investigation check. That's probably better. Better for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It helps me a lot when you guys fail. Uh, keeps a little air of mystery around everything. Because <laughs> uh, you roll, you roll a nat 20, now all of a sudden I gotta come up with the, the entire history of Ice Knife, a spell that... Uh, <laughs> a spell that I cast once with an NPC... Um, Read a uh, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> uh, she's got uh, she's got uh, well kept red hair. Uh, there's a few braids that were that were kind of undone, and probably all this nonsense. The white robe that she's in um, is a fine cloth and doesn't really seem to match the uh, the kind of like tunic uh, undergarments that she has on underneath. Um, she's got like pants and like a, a, a shirt, but they're much more akin to like, um, you know, like a, everyday clothing. Um, this fine robe does not seem of that sort. Um, no markings on her whatsoever, you know, with the two investigation, that's, that's probably as good as it gets. She's just breathing in out. Um, Melanger kind of looks at you, Odaxi, as you pull your hand back, and she, she kind of nods and goes, uh, "I had a bit of the same reaction. I, I don't know why, I know why it still hurts so badly. Uh, it doesn't seem to be melting in the snow, which is a bit cause of alarm for alarm."
Uh-oh. Why did Sorry. the music start up? Oh, oh no. <laughs> just trying to get something different to play. I, like, I didn't, I didn't want the cue battle music. Cast, cast firebolt. We're yeah. attacked by ice knife. Here, maybe we'll... Uh, I'm still learning some of the uh, the music here, so maybe we'll, we'll do a little something say, less aggressive. This one has peace in the title. I think this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, Adaki was, was not able to pull this shard out? Uh, it he was damage to me. Yeah, he did. Or I could even grab it. Yeah. Do we? Um, can I cast Mage Hand? Oh. And try to have Mage Hand pull it out. Sure, if you want. Um. Does uh, how does how does your how does you how do you use Mage Hand? How does that uh, how does that look for you? Oh man. Um. I'm gonna ask you that for all your spells, so in the future, just uh, you know, something to think about for fun. Way more creative, for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it'll it'll just kind of appear where I, where I point at it to do, and uh, yeah, a, a blue spectral hand will kind of pop up and, and do whatever I you know the the, the verbal component will kind of be the command that I'm initially commanding it to do. Uh, so I'm gonna point at that blue crystal and say. Pull that out. Sure. So this, this sort of spectral hand kind of like uh, uh, appears and, and moves towards uh, Melandra, and you can kind of see her. She tenses up again and gives you like a a, a bit of a, a side eye as, as it kind of floats towards her. But um, at this point, you get the sense that uh, she just wants this damn thing out of her side no matter what. So she kind of rears back grips the uh the chair you can kind of hear the wood splinter a little bit under her her, her strong her strong grasp um i mean make an arcana make an arcana check to see if you can manifest enough energy to 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 grip this this strange thing and and pull it from from melandra's side i i can also help i can help with guidance i give his role the buff sure i think it's a d4 yes it's an additional d4 which uh, i roll uh he can roll it it's fine oh, or you okay. or you can roll it no that, that 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 <clears throat> that's all it did uh yeah you can roll a d4 in roll 20 uh on yeah, the top left yeah, that's fine. Whichever way you guys want to do it. Oops. Never mind. Yeah, there you, you go. Roll. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do we have a roll? The Quint is gonna like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my roll. Oh my goodness! All right, so from now on, since we're gonna set a standard for the rest of the campaign, uh, it it uh, says. The target rolls a D4. Yeah, so, so we're going to go with the one. So it's his so, roll. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so an eight. Yeah. Through, like, uh, the tether of magical energy in your hand as you're trying to manipulate this this spectral hand, you can feel... Um, you can feel the form of, of, of the crystal, but... Uh, and you can even feel, oddly enough, your hands start to get kind of cold as well, which is kind of rare because you don't usually share the sense of of That's touch scary. with the spectral hand so as you as you go and as you grip it and you feel like you've got a, a good steady grip uh the cold the coldness in your hand from the spectral hand kind of uh kind of shocks you a little bit and you release and the spectral hand kind of just into like a plume of snow and just melts instantly from the heat of the fire um uh she's doomed To Quinn's going to grab a ladle full of soup. That thing's still on her side, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, the thing is still there. I'm going to grab the ladle of the soup and like bring it over to her. Tell her to sip on this. And then just grab a couple of rags, wrap it around my hand, and just shank the thing out. <laughs> okay. She, uh takes the ladle of soup uh and kind of like also watching you um 
she Gotta just the brute force tactic. She she just tosses the soup, tosses the ladle to the side, quickly realizing uh, uh, this. And DeQuinn, you know, as someone who's fought in many fights, um, she her reflexes almost a mirror your own. She very quickly uh, kind of realizes what's going on here, puts the soup, puts the ladle of soup to the side, and kind of like again grips the chair. Um, make a Constitution saving throw, followed by. A strength check. This whole time, Carol has just kind of been like reassuringly keeping a hand on uh, Melandra's shoulder. Okay. Uh, <laughs> she probably she'll reach up and grab your hand as 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 DeQuinn, this this large towering Minotaur figure, uh, begins to like start to 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 grip this uh, crystal jagged edge in her in her side. And she squeezes your hand um, with pretty, pretty incredible strength. Uh, she, let's see, first, oh, did I roll twice? Yeah. Um, so you take two damage, two cold damage to Quinn. Mm-hmm. Um, but you are able to, uh, with just t- tenacity, you actually can feel the the shards start to slip out of out of her side and she lets out this this yell that she can't contain and she kind of quickly like grits her teeth uh it's almost uh coming out and she kind of taps she it, it's like uh pulling out slowly a little bit of blood comes out um some of it freezes actually around the edge uh of the shard as it as it comes out um it's almost wrenched free and she kind of looks at you carol and she goes pull it pull it pull it pull it Right away, I'm gonna help. Uh, help. Oh, <laughs> you're gonna just reach in there? Yeah, just like grab the other hand and just like make sure none of my actual skin's touching it and just pull. Okay, as you you two gonna like kind of wrap around to Quinn's hand. Sure, let's go with that. <laughs> What's well, you? It's your, it's your, your, your action. What do you want to do? Yeah, I definitely want to try and pull it out. Like all the strength we need, right? Okay. As you get closer, um, you, uh, you don't really feel this sort of cold, uh, cold, uh, uh, sensation that everyone else seems to be dancing around. Um, make a Constitution saving throw. Yeah, as you as you get close to the shard and you kind of like are trying to also dance around, sort of like putting your skin contact on it because you realize it's something dangerous, although you know not really sure what. Um, you don't feel the cold at all, um, and in fact, it seems a bit reassuring. Uh, and given the situation going on, you can hear Melandra kind of like uh, uh, kind of screaming in the background. You wrap your hand around it and and as tightly as you can, and between you and DeQuinn, both putting your uh putting your force behind it you're able to kind of just pull the shard out uh of her side and she lets out like this, this bit of a gasp and kind of almost falls over in the chair uh but the shard is out and she cl- clutches her side uh now finally able to like put her hand there and put pressure on it um a little I'm blood a- starts to trickle through her hand i'm immediately just gonna use all my lay on hands on her all five points. So you put your hand on her. Sh- where do you? Where do you? Because I think you have to contact her, right? Um. Yeah. Touch a creature to restore the point. Hit points. Okay. Just put your hand anywhere, or. Uh, I'm just gonna put it over hers. Okay. On where on her side, uh, as your yeah, hand goes over. Kind of like holding the wound over, just kind of like. And there's already a bit of a, a glow from where her hand is. And as you put your hand on top of her, she kind of looks up at you with a, a sense of uh, compassion uh, that you, you rarely see. You, you, you've caught glimpses of it in the past, but, you know, like in this in this form, kind of like with everything going on, she's not even able to like really filter it that well. And and between the both of you, there's this 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 glow and this warmth at, separate of the fire, separate of 
of of like hand on hand body heat or anything like that. Uh, and as you as you do that, uh, you, she's able to like kind of calm her breathing some. She breathes in, breathes out. She's not wincing as as badly anymore. Uh, the queen's gonna go over and pick the ladle up and say the ladle was to shut you up, and then just walk back over the soup. <laughs> She's, she's, kind of, from Carol. <laughs> she's kind of leaning back. You actually hear her chuckle a little bit. Uh, probably more of relief. Uh, but uh, I appreciate the gesture, I suppose. Oh, my. It's good to, it's good to be able to breathe now without uh, the feeling of frostbite scraping my insides. Um... I assume we just dropped the ice knife on the ground. After Throw it into it. the flame. <laughs> that was my next question is who's holding the magical ice knife? I assume we dropped it. And like wrap. Can use... So wrapping wrap claws. Rag, think, yeah. Um, first and then pulled it out. And then I think after the big effort of dropping it, it would have just dropped on the ground. So as you go, do you say you're going to pick it up? No, I'm not. I went back over the I'll, soup. I'll... Uh, cast sacred flame on it. Oh, okay. <laughs> to, to eliminate it, since it's still not going away. I, if it's like a what a range attack, <laughs> it is. Uh, we're gonna say with this at this in this situation, you're you're more than capable of hitting it as you kind of point and 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 hold your holy symbol uh, and and mutter under your breath. Uh, the rags. Uh, begin to just ignite and, and instantly um, and the flame just dies out almost as quickly um, and the rags kind of like are just on the ground flat Is, but the dagger is gone uh, you don't see any piece of the dagger Okay, good. On the ground. So yeah, it just it seems either the flame, yeah, the flame, or maybe just the fact that it was removed. Um, just for being pulled out. Okay. Yeah, has 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 caused it to not be an issue anymore. Um, Kara, as you kind of both foul magic. As you kind of as you both pull your hand away. Um, you see the, the, the mark where this ice dagger was, um, there's a, f the, the flesh kind of around that, that, that pierced portion of her, of her ribs is blackish, bluish, um, and, uh, and still present, like the, there's still a mark there. Um, Melandra kind of like looks down at it, looks at her hand and looks at you and well that's better i suppose but perhaps um not uh maybe a good night's rest is all i need to to, sh to shake the rest of this off we need to wake this one up i'll motion to the our other conscious friend that we brought here yeah to find out who who the figure was that had imprisoned her anyways. Uh, do you, well, what do you, what do you find sense, fellows want to do? Uh, no, probably not. It's not like a, uh, it's more of a, um, a that's more of a, um, ritual, thing. A, a ritual thing. Right. It's not a uh, actual, like, um, like smelling salts or anything like that. I'll go over and just jostle her then. I'm just going to shake her? Shake her away. Shake her. <laughs> roll, a sh roll, roll a shake attack. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> shake, shake, attack. shake, shake. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our cleric. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Years of training have brought you to the point where... Yes, I just shake her. You realize, <laughs> as you kind of stand over a little bit and Davos goes, you know, we should probably wake her up and see what's going on. 
you kind of nod and take in, take in all your surroundings and you just reach down and grasp. I'm just picturing you grasp the whole bed since you're so <laughs> large and just kind of shake the bed like a, a, like an earthquake almost is happening around her. It's kind of tap on her head with my trunk a little bit. <laughs> Just trying uh, to see if she's responsive at all. As you're doing it, Turtur kind of, she's still like helping with the soup and the stew and, and, and salting some meats. And she goes, what in the devil? As she sees you shake this bed, you know, with this unconscious woman in it. Um, you do hear uh, the figure who is unconscious, you know, like uh, sleeping in the bed. She kind of jolts forward and, and he goes, ah, ah, ah. She kind of screams a little bit more. <laughs> She's surrounded by a uh, uh, a figure. I'm assuming wrapped in fur, right? Davos, almost yeah. head to toe. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, a loxodon uh, with you know an, an elephant uh, sort of uh, face and figure towering above her, shaking her as she lays in the bed. Uh, she lets out a a pretty good scream, <laughs> um, and. Uh, We'll take a break right there, I think, before we continue. Uh, let uh, let everyone go to the restroom quickly and uh, and come back in just a second. Copy. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. So everyone, just take a take quick a quick fiver. Um, uh, five ten minutes. Grab some food or drink or whatever you need, and we'll come right back. Well, I fix my link that I posted in Reddit because I posted the wrong link. Let me cue us some music here, some sort of uh, please wait music. What do we got? Suddenly battle music. Yeah, <laughs> how'd that go for everyone? We'll do this one. I don't know. It says peaceful, right? Thanks, Reaver, for letting me know that Link was absolutely dreadful. Archie? Uh, I don't know. Reaver in black? I don't. I doubt it, oh, but... that's not him. Yeah, I doubt it, but it could be. All right, I am going to kill the mic and switch over to our, our waiting page, and I'll be right back, everyone. Stole this image from Mass Effect 3. Oh, 2. Never mind.
I've returned as well, in case anybody was interested. I have not left. Oh, welcome back. Do you think people so, would care if, if I ate noodles give... on stream? Oh, noodles? Is that Probably Austin not. Slurped them up. Gonna I think. Yeah, I think uh, you'd only get rage. Just realized if I had, it had sound. Headset on. Let me try and actually put the right headphones in. Wow, I didn't even hear our response. Yeah. I mean, if people. If people get angry over you eating noodles, just like embrace oh it, honestly. This technology. I was watching a video of Kurt Angle eating noodles and like he put it in his mouth and instead of slapping up, he just got scissors and just chopped it. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Imagine if scissors was like an actual piece of cutlery. Wait, what did I miss? You you asked us about noodles, but I don't think you heard any of our responses because you said you were wearing the wrong headset. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna slurp noodles for the rest of the stream. Is that okay with everyone? I was just saying, I saw a video of Kurt Angle. He just put noodles in his mouth, and instead of slurping it up, he just cut the noodles from his mouth with scissors. I feel like <clears throat> what what is that from? What show is that? I feel like I've seen that before. I don't know. I just saw a video of Kurt Angle doing it in front of his wife. Oh, and then I've seen that in like a life video too. It's got to be anime. There's an anime or something that did that. But I'm cool with you eating noodles. I'm not gonna get jealous or anything. Yeah, I, I am not. Answer that. That was rude. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna force anyone to watch me eat noodles on stream. That will never go well. <laughs> Do it. I feel like watching. I don't care about. Is is if they hear the slurping. It's audible. Then that's yeah. the problem. <laughs> You'll pay extra. For Pay extra for that, right? <laughs> There's a different section in Twitch, right? It's live chat when you see noodles and talk. <laughs> yeah, I just think that's just noodling. Noodles and hang. <laughs> oh, wait, there's like a proper name for it. Like, um, something bang. I, I remember it was like huge a couple of years ago. People would really, like, it was just noodles? Mak, mak, mak bang. Mak that's bang. It. Yeah, that's like close up of people eating on oh, Twitch God. or YouTube. Hell is yeah. wrong with people. I don't know. It's like ASMR, but for eating, basically. That's what mukbang is. I think it's Korean, the word. Afraid to Google that. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna get fired on the computer. What you said, it's gonna be like some kind of like food porn or something. I don't know what it's gonna it's be. M M M U K B A N G. One word. I don't, actually, I don't really want to know how it's spelled. Okay. I know it's spelled, I'm gonna Google it. I don't want to Google it. You just want to <laughs> remove it from your memory. Exactly. Men in black style just poom, forget everything. <laughs> yeah, we're we're about to appeal to a whole different audience. This, you know what? This whole stream just changed everyone. <laughs> Reaver was kind enough to tell me that my Reddit post was linked to a moderator um, a URL and not the actual stream, but that's okay. It's nice of him to let him know. Yeah, I really appreciate that. I was thinking if you're going to put YouTube clips up as well, put your Twitch URL in it. Yeah, I'll, I'm actually probably do the full upload to uh, to YouTube is the plan. Oh, copy. Big fun. And then we'll um we can do clips of whatever you know maybe fun like you know like the the wolf piercing kill was was a fun little clip. Um, turns out video editing's kind of hard though you know it's not super easy like you'd think it'd be. I could imagine. Believe in you. Yeah. If you ever need help with um any of that kind of stuff, you can just hit me up. Uh, I will happily do that. Because I have no goddamn clue what I'm doing with this stuff. Point in case I yeah. barely got uh, barely got all the links right for the for just uh, streaming everything. Yeah, I mean I don't know about like Twitch setups or anything like that, but like video editing, done it a little bit throughout high school. And stuff. 
stuff, so I should be able to mm -hmm. help you out there. It probably should be the new standard taught all over. Oh all my right, god, 100%. Yeah. Although then we'd have way too many Twitch streamers and YouTubers <laughs> for the world, I think. We... we already do, don't we? Yeah, we do. <laughs> we do. There's a little kid somewhere that makes more money than all f all five of us combined just opening up toys. So <laughs> <laughs> never never forget that when you wake up every Monday morning. Oh, I'm gonna remember that now and be so envious. <laughs> off to work. What do you mean? I'm already creating my page of opening up toys. <laughs> And eat noodles. You've got a whole, you've got a whole okay. Monday's okay. toys, a whole Tuesday noodles. I'm going to be doing on my Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> Monday noodle day, Tuesday toy day, Wednesday. Pizza. Uh, pizza. Oh yeah, I can do pizza. And then Thursday will be gardening. Cause you got to, you know, what? branch out. Yeah, well, you never know. You gotta get old people into it. Maybe they want to do some gardening. Yeah, it's diversity. See what a horrible time I'm doing. Appeal to everyone. Gotta capture. <laughs> gotta capture that senior citizen market on Twitch. <laughs> exactly. Untapped. <laughs> That's an elusive group. <laughs> it's horrifying I, that all four I of you have have never met before this and completely agree immediately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I stream Pong and Frogger every Wednesday, uh, ten o'clock in the morning. So. <laughs> That's oh it. my goodness. <laughs> well, just don't compete with prices, right? All right, we're going to jump back to this before this derails any further. Prices, right. So where, where we left off, I believe, DeQuinn, you are still stirring stew. Meat, uh, wolf, wolf bit stew. Um, and I believe it's almost ready. It's got to be pretty close. Yeah, you can... I've been watching can... the preparation happen. It's had berries added to it, more water. Yeah, I saw that go through chat. I'll have to go... On. I'll have to go... <laughs> So, DeQuinn just doesn't give a F about COVID uh, precautions. That's fine, though. Um, so, DeQuinn's over there managing the stew. Uh, Caro is kind of uh, over, uh, looking over her uh, mentor, Melandra, as she's trying to recover from having a magical ice dagger ripped from her side. Um, our two other compatriots, uh, Otaxi and Davos, decided to shake to consciousness uh, uh, a woman that that they had found tied to a post um, on an icy hill uh, with, a, with a strange man uh, by her. I'm, I'm not going to scream into your guys' ears. I feel like just out of respect um, and something I probably don't want made into a meme later that uh, I'm going to avoid doing that. But there's a, a pretty good scream that comes from this, this younger-looking woman as she comes to, comes to and sees uh, you two standing over here, over her. And then, very quickly, she looks around, darts her eyes back and forth. Oh, I'm not being murdered anymore. That's After nice. Stream, uh, Kara would definitely just kind of run over to the bed, just like quickly making sure that Melander's still okay in her seat before just running over. Uh, you see this woman uh, processing everything, and then an another girl kind of pops into her view as she's as she's coming to and she kind of looks and goes well this is better this is better hello little quinn's gonna start serving out soup and he'll first go to davos and give that lady in the white um some soup in a bowl turda's kind of standing beside you uh she's the owner of this uh not an inn, but more of like a, a, a community medical facility. She starts slinging wooden bowls um, to you. They're in rough shape, but they hold something. And she's kind of helping you like uh, distribute this uh, this uh, wolf bit stew um, to to everyone else, or to to two bowls at least. Yeah, I imagine she like set up bowls and I'll pour it in and then give it to the people, and then she'll be pouring it, and I'll just hand it to the people. Oh, oh, that's, this is nice. Thank you. I'd describe. ask our, our newly awake friend, uh, what's your name? Oh, uh, 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 Danica? Well, what's your name? What's the last thing you remember? Uh, 
very violently shaking in my bed. That's not my bed. Uh, I was in the forest outside of my room, outside of my, the, the room where I'm staying. Uh, I was searching for, uh, search, searching for chickwas. Were you alone? Uh, I think so. Whereabouts were you staying? Uh... I was, uh, right outside of East Haven. Uh, it was an inn called, oh, East of West, North of, West of East was the name of the inn. I was really close to, to, to catching, to catching these little suckers. What, what were you catching? Uh, a, a chigwa? Uh, bless you. I'm sorry. Uh, it's more commonly pronounced up here. Uh, ch chawinga, chawinga. That's what. That's what it is. I, I'm afraid I don't know what that is. Would any of us know what a chawinga is? I might. <laughs> if it was in a book. Um. Sure. 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 Roll a roll. Roll a history. Uh, if you want to, anyone that, anyone that, no, you don't get to, Caro. You're not from this area. Davos, uh, and, uh, and DeQuinn, you can roll, uh, you can roll history. Uh, you, and then, Adaxi, you can roll with disadvantage just because of the sheer amount of books you've read. Something very, very specific like this, um, would be tough to come by, uh, being an outsider as well. For sure. You want disadvantage, you said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Hold on. Sorry, Kara, there is no way you're coming across this in, in, in Paladin training. I don't know why... It... I don't know why it rolls, like, twice like that when I say roll disadvantage or advantage. Does that is uh, that what that means, that you roll twice to take the better one? Yes, so advantage is roll twice, Got take it. the better, and then disadvantage is roll it. twice, take the second. Got it. I was like, wait, what are you talking about? Uh, Davos, no goddamn clue. Uh, this sounds, it's an interesting thing, but it doesn't sound like something you'd find useful. Uh, DeQuinn of Daxi. Um, you, <laughs> DeQuinn. What do you mean? <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I realize I made you roll history and your character doesn't give a F about any history, like, remotely. Um. No, but he's from up north, surely. Yeah, he, yeah, it's, yeah, so he's heard... Tree. He's heard of little children chasing uh, small fairy folk um, in the woods. Like small, not even fairy folk, just small critters, essentially. Um, no one's ever caught one that you know of. It's kind of something that you would have heard. Uh, and and Odaxi as well. This would probably be how you come across this information. as like a, a way to keep children busy without... Um, like with a useless task that they can mm. never complete. Go, go catch. Go go, go go leave a treat for the leprechaun. Yeah. Go 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 chase chowingas in the woods and and let me know when you find one. Um. Chowingas. Ch chowingas. Yeah. Chowingas are fake. Lady. <laughs> They're not. Fake. Uh, actually, uh, that's a that's actually a common misconception. Um, though hard to find. Uh, Chewingas are very real, and frankly, <clears throat> frankly, I believe that they're could be could be possibly able to to manipulate the the weather. In fact, I almost caught one, and then I didn't, and then I woke up, and I was tied to this post with a very weird man staring at me, and then I woke up, and I was. Shaken in a bed with a very weird man staring at me. I should probably just go home. Wait, uh, this first weird man, would you care to uh, let us know any details about, like, when he tied you to the post or anything of that matter? Uh, I just remember I was, I had my lantern and it was, 
it was really close. I was really close to finding uh, a chewinga, and then I heard a voice behind me. He was murmuring something about skipping town when I wasn't supposed to, and it was it was my turn to 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 be the person to I don't know uh, bring glory to. Ariel and Ariel and and the next thing I know I was tied to a post and he was telling me how you know I it, I was chosen and that I have to be the one and next thing I know uh, I woke up here now when she says Ariel do we all understand who that is um yes uh Everyone, again, probably but Caro and Melandra would understand that uh, uh, Aurel is, um, is what many people believe in this area to be uh, cause, right? the cause of the, yes, of this winter. So it's always cold in Icewind Dales, but uh, this last, these last few years have been uh, just a perpetual blizzard and overcast, and, and it's been much, much worse, and many people believe that... Um, uh, a real is the cause of that, um, and the Tin Towns and the Icewind Dales—they are trying to appease this mysterious god, essentially, to to have mercy on them and and not freeze them all to hell. Um, uh, De Quinn and uh, Davos, you would know that. Each different town, they some towns are doing different things to try to appease to Oriel. Um, Odaxi, you would know this town specifically. They do what's called a sacrifice of warmth, uh, where even at night, um, they rather than like light fires and try and keep cozy, um, they they uh there's no there's no fires allowed between um dusk and dawn uh and f- it forces a lot of the locals to have to like share like at best body heat just to stay alive through the winter night um and then anyone who dies anyone who lights a fire is is um punished by this town um torta you know or torta excuse me would have she let you know this yesterday when you arrived um, and you did have a pretty cold night. She has plenty of spare blankets to try and to try and get you through it. I guess after hearing this girl just like say all this stuff about Oril and chosen ones and stuff, she just turns to the group and is like, "I'm sorry, absolutely none of this made sense to me. I don't know if she's even sane." Melandro. Melandro and Caro in like a um, bowl of soup and say <laughs> once again you come up north ill prepared Melandro will take the soup and kind of prop herself up some and she looks she looks obviously smaller features because she's outside of her, her large armor um, but uh, she still looks even even a little bit weaker um, better now that, that the, the thing has been removed but uh, still kind of struggling to, to, to keep her balance, and she kind of walks over and goes, uh, actually, my horn friend, uh, and she looks at you, Dax, and goes, no offense, uh, we're quite aware of the situation with Aurel, and, it's okay, uh, tasks. uh, yes, of course, uh, perpetual winter here, in fact, that's why I believe we're supposed to head to Bryn Shander to see if we can offer our services to, and she, Grimms is a little uh, to try to do whatever we can to ease the suffering of the towns here and uh, investigate the cause of this just devastating winter season, uh, year-round winter season, it seems. So while we may not have all of the information we need, uh, we are not as ill-prepared as you may think. She's kind of looking at you to Gwen. As soon as she mentioned my horns, and I'm super self-conscious about it, he just ignores everything she says, and just starts grabbing some sort of wax material, and just like, 
puts it on his horns and then just ignores it completely and just making sure that the horns are in an immaculate condition. Is this the first time Caro has heard of what they're um, doing up here? Probably. In in more detail, yeah. I mean, you know that you're assigned to follow Melandra. Melandra said you're going to Icewind Dales, and that was really it. It was pack up, prepare for the cold. Caro just kind of gives Melandra a look, but doesn't say anything more. Just kind of just like screws up her eyebrows a little bit. <laughs> she kind of looks at you. Again, probably more uh, open than usual. And, and she goes, when we arrived in Brinchander, we were supposed to learn more and uh, get a bit of better understanding of what we're doing here and why. I'm not sure why the Order sent us here in the first place. It doesn't seem like much of our problem, but here we are. And stabbed for it, nonetheless. Uh, I would ask, Deanna, uh, are, are you strong enough to travel? Um, travel where? You said East Haven. Oh, yeah, yeah, East Haven. Um, I can, uh, uh, I'll probably need some better clothes since all I have is this creepy robe. Is this, is this robe yours? By chance? In the blanket? Uh, no, the yeah. white robe that she's in. The... Oh, okay. Yeah I'll, yeah, I'll say yes, but I'm going to take that and just kind of stuff it in or pour it back. And stuff oh. It oh, okay. Um, well, uh, yeah, I, um, I'll probably need some, some better clothes, but I can, I can probably travel. I need to go get my lantern anyway. Um, I, 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 I'm so close, I think, to, to actually finding these, um, these, these things and proving once and for all that I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry? Is that what you call him? Chimichangas? Ch no, no, Chawinga. Ch Chawinga. Chim... Ch Ch Chawinga. Chawinga. Chimichangas. Oh. Oh my. <laughs> um. Why do you want to find these What lantern? I I'm sorry? What lantern? I have a lantern. Retrieve? I have a lantern that it glows when, when you get close to close to them so that you can help find them. Where did you leave this lantern? Well, it was in my room uh, at the west of the East Inn. Um, because I, it, it doesn't, it only tells you if you get within like 30 feet of one. I'm sorry, 300 feet of one. So once you kind of get close, it's really up to you to, to, to find them. You don't really need the lantern anymore. So I put it in my room. And I was outside. I thought I saw one scurry across the ground. Um, sometimes they ride other small woodland creatures like foxes or squirrels. Uh, but then uh, next thing I know, I was here, wherever this is, tied to a post. As you guys are kind of talking, Melandra saunters over to like one of the empty beds Um so, you know, in this room, there are, like, four beds, kind of all, like, not in a row, but, like, in a square of sorts. And this one gentleman who, you know, was here from, from last night, or from the morning, uh, from the attack, he's in one. Um, uh, Danica's in another. And then behind uh, behind her, Melandra kind of lays down, and um, she kind of gestures over to uh, Odaxi and goes, uh, does this look normal to you? She kind of shows oh. you this 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 icy wound um, from from the shard. I will get my medicine kit, which I think I have. Uh, 
Uh, I'll go over and investigate. Sure. Um, I'll say... Uh, and you've rolled... Mm, yeah, I think you've I think you've seen enough, and I know you you had a you had a pretty decent role on the way in, like kind of when she still had like the armor on or whatever. Um, just I don't don't want to make you keep rerolling, but you can kind of you see very quickly that um, uh, you know that she was hit by a strange magical uh uh spell, the spell you're familiar with, but doesn't usually manifest like that. And then you see this wound with this gaping wound, kind of with this purplish dark blue, um, um tent to some of the flesh and then actually like as you look closer you can see that the veins going to the wound are still they also are kind of of this blue nature uh very close and um it does not look natural to you at all um she as you as you kind of examine she goes i uh i used uh, a bit of magic to try to to try to at least seal the wound up some but i don't i'm afraid i don't think it had much of an effect does seem like an unnatural <clears throat> infection of sorts. I'm not sure what that can be done. She um she goes it's actually it's still cold to the touch not like um not like before but it's almost as if uh it deprives this entire area of any sort of like body heat. Is there someone in Bryn Shander who might be more knowledgeable than us about this? Um, it's possible. You know that Bryn Shander is the largest, uh, like city. Uh, essentially, it's like the the core city city, um, in Ten Towns. Uh, if there's someone there that does know, it's it's uh, it's possible uh, they would be there. I'm sorry, yeah. Um, but it's hard to say for sure. Um, none of this seems like something any of you are familiar with. I think we need to get her somewhere else. Um, actually, uh, is the wound, uh, you said it was cold? Cold in nature? And Melandra kind of like looks over at this girl who is sitting in bed you get the sense that Melandra doesn't really uh doesn't really give this woman a ton of stock um but uh she goes uh she says I uh the what looks at the rest of you this crystal I don't know dagger or shard um damn near burnt my hand it was so cold and in a, a weird sensation of sharp heat but but not but cold and uh and since then yeah this this my wound has been cold to the touch and uh danica sitting up in bed a little more kind of in between like sips of soup um kind of she pushes some of the meaty bits away and just kind of break drinks the broth um uh, well if it's if it's cold in nature um chowingas have been known to be able to uh, affect the elements perhaps they can uh they can look at your wound and and actually help you fix it there's still a lot we don't know about them. They're pretty, pretty, pretty rambunctious and hard, hard uh, uh, folk to, to 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 contact. How how long would the journey be from here to East Haven? The journey from there to East Haven is approximately, I think, about eight hours. I'll take a look for you real quick. I know it's about. So the next, so you know the next town over, because again, you guys are you pretty well versed in this area. Um, the next town over is um, Goodmead. I'll make sure I'm telling you guys correctly. Uh, it's Goodmead, and then after that, to the east is uh, Brinchander. You guys all should have actually access to the 
to the the map of Icewind Dale. Do you have that yeah. in your I in do. your setup? Yeah. So, um, let me see. Oh, my music is being annoying again. <laughs> um, handouts. So handouts, maps, map of Icewind Dale. Um, yeah, so it's Goodmead and then East Haven. I believe I should have a more exact number for you. I would say it's probably about eight hours. Um, maybe, um, maybe, maybe 10. Um, I know they give you a pretty good summary here. So East Haven? Let's see. 8%? Yeah, to East Haven. I know it's it's about four hours to uh, four and four and a half hours to Goodmead, um, and then I, th I'm sorry, it's yeah, it's about four hours to Goodmead, and then about another four four and a half to uh, East Haven. And what time um, is it now? It's a little later now. Uh, it's probably it's actually getting close to dusk, um, and you can see kind of um, Turta is kind of scrambling to to get things cooked um, quickly uh, because uh, soon, at, you know, at least you guys may not know this quite yet, but soon um, having having fires in homes is going to be very, very frowned upon. And you said I would know that, right? Yeah, I think so. I think as travelers, you, you understand that uh, different towns are doing different things, and this is this would not surprise you guys. Uh, Carol and Melandra are in for a bit of a surprise, um, but uh, would, but you guys would probably probably know that. I would mention to the group uh, it, it's going to be it, it may even be warmer on the road than it will be in this town if we stay overnight. I think we may want to get on the road and get out of here in the morning, right? No. Mm. You said it's coming in late in the afternoon. It's getting later, yeah. You you're free to travel these paths at night time, my friend. But I think Davos and I are going to stay behind and rest. You're talking. You're talking to Davos. Oh, well, I thought I was Davos is to, <laughs> my friend. No, oh. Davos is the one who said. Uh, uh, <laughs> it, it said nothing. Man, I to get going. Hmm. I don't think that's a good idea, Davos. Traveling these roads at night, especially with an injured party member. And point to Melandra. Perhaps it's best to leave in the morning. At least give it some time for the fuel to cure and acquire some more provisions. We have run a bit low. We'll definitely need to rest up before we go anywhere. I agree. Turta kind of, um, kind of around you folk now. She, um, she leans, she kind of leans in and goes, Well, you're welcome to stay here, dears, but it is getting close to time to, to put out the fire. Um, I have many blankets around the house, but I'm, Going to be frank with you, it's gonna, it's gonna be a cold one. So I, I'm sorry. Put out the fire. Uh, hi dear. Um. In this town, we show our appreciation to the goddess Uriel by giving up warmth for the night. Um, and with that pain, we hope that she has mercy on us and and brings us. Brutal winter to a quick a quick uh, end. Taro is incredibly astonished right now. I tried to warn you. Just looks like she's been punched in the face, basically. Doxy's shaking his head as well. He knew about this. Thinks that we should try to convince her to keep the fire going. For our well-being. I like... I if we try to keep the fire going and someone in the towns finds out it could it could not end well 
There's uh, I, I, I'm barely able to keep this place on my own as it is without, without my husband's title. So I, I don't think it's that I can risk. The rest of the town being. Even more upset with me. And we make camp outside of town. Hi, you're welcome to. I mean. But it's 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 a a blizzard. You'd be unprotected if something came in. If there was an avalanche. If there were uh, more wolves out there. We've already had two attacks. Quinn just laughs at the notion of spending the night outside. He's like, oh, and he just starts picking up furs, and he's just going to sit in a corner. I mean, I don't, I don't know if if, if if there are any natural caves or anything where you could find some sort of, um. Some sort of cover, but it's, I mean, it gets cold. Believe me, you're best in shelter, even without a fire, than out there with a fire. To put into perspective for you guys, um, it's probably like on average, like below, uh, like 32 degrees Fahrenheit, you know, zero degrees Celsius, um, that's on average at nighttime. And if like a, a cold storm appears, um, it can get below like 30, 50 60 degrees if you're not careful um this is turcha explaining this to you and uh but not knowing the D D equivalent of fahrenheit um this is also jared explaining it to you to kind of get a sense of of how cold it can actually be out there if you're not careful well we're I mean, not moving the... him even if we wanted to and i motion over to, to quinn there so we, we may as well just get cozy Melander kind of coughs up in the back of his I, to be honest, I don't know if I can take any more cold than that I'm already experiencing. If there's no fire, there's no fire. But out there, not knowing what's what could be around any corner, looking for a quick snack, I think it's probably best to to huddle up here one night and maybe see how we feel in the morning. Quinn will stand up, like pick up the big furs and just chuck it all over Melandra. Are there more? Uh, and there are more blankets here than than what we had with us. Yeah, I mean this place is pretty stocked. Um, of the three beds, of the four beds, you know, one guy has he's wrapped soft. in blankets. Yeah, one's too hard, uh, <laughs> and one's just right. Um, <laughs> no, uh, there's 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 just a variety of fabrics all over. I mean. Um, there's some, and some of them are actually like, uh, skins from some other animals. Um, this, this place is, um, in total Odaxi, you, cause having stayed, you'd probably know that there's like, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, like six beds total. Like, like they're not, again, they're not of the best quality material and, uh, but there's a ton of like blankets and rags and. It's, it it didn't help you much last night, but uh, it was something manageable. Yeah. Are we a hundred percent certain that the horses will last the night in the stables, or should they be brought in to warmth as well? Uh that's a that's a good question, dear. We don't usually have horses out here. Um. I mean, I could I could bring them in and and um, bring them inside so they're a little more a little more secure if you want. Um, they're not gonna hurt anything down here at this uh, on the bottom level. After like throwing all the furs onto Melanja, and then I will look to Caro. Well, what are you waiting for, woman? Grab your horses. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, I'll go and help with the 
horse situation. I'll help with the horses too. Um, as you both go out, uh, to Quinn, Melandra kind of looks at you. She takes all the furs off and drops them on the ground, stands up and like heads to over her armor and starts to, to begin to like put it on. And she looks at you and she goes, if you ever give my palate, my paladin an order again, I'll cut you down where you stand. You'll just chuckle. Well, and before you said anything. She walks away before you even, as you're chuckling, you know, she turns her back and begins to, like, put her armor on. Um, yeah, I don't think the horses are going to give you guys much trouble uh, coming in. They're going to uh, be happier. It's going to be weird, you know, bringing them in through, through like, a doorway, not entirely uh, large, but uh, they will... They will happily kind of follow at the side of Caro coming in uh, to try and get out of the cold as best they can. Um, they they do kind of like uh, like knock over like a few things as they like turn and try and find to get situated in the in the bottom uh, bottom portion of this place. They begin to realize it's a bit futile and just kind of like, you know, like lay, uh, tucking their legs under them in, in, in the corner. Um, I think that's how horses lay down, right? They, they actually lay down, I believe. This is not something I prepared for it as a DM. They don't sleep standing up, do they? They can. They can. How do horses sleep? <laughs> they like either do like standing up or like with... Yeah, they, they got, in, yeah, they kind of criss, crisscross their legs and just both kind of nuzzle nuzzle next to each other in like a corner of, of the first floor house, the first story of the house. Um, if I'm incorrect, I will consult my cousins. <laughs> now, yeah, you know, that's, that's, if that's what I'm wrong on tonight, then I'll take that, you know, there's not much else I can, not much else I can do. Um, yeah, so, uh, Turta kind of begins to like, uh, douse the fire, um, and store what she can of the uh, of the stew and the leftover meats that you know she wasn't able to quite prepare. She'll kind of wrap them, grab some ice from outside, and and put and put them on. Um, is there anything else you guys want to accomplish tonight? No, I think um, the, the sooner we sleep, the sooner we can get out. Long of here. rest. The Quinn would want to go talk over walk over and talk to Dev also. Okay. Um, Davos, what's the plan for tomorrow? Are we traveling with the walrus and woman <laughs> and girl? Like, what's I, the plan? I think that we should go where those paladins go. It sounds like there could be work there. I don't they're gonna live for long in this north. I... But whoever they're going to help is gonna need help. I don't see this going very well. What would you have us do? I'm not one to lead, Davos. You know that. I'm here to follow you around. But it's been a while since we've traveled with other people just forgive me for my um i don't know it's a word i'm looking for you'll get you just to yeah and I'll, Words... I'll scratch behind your horn <laughs> devils i'm not a kid anymore <laughs> Rest. And he's just gonna give some blankets to Davos and then hold up in a corner somewhere. Make sure everyone else has got beds besides him, I guess. Uh, does anyone else want to accomplish anything before the 
the night presses on. I mean, it's still early-ish, like six or seven. I mean, you're definitely welcome to try to catch some early sleep, but um, as the sun starts to to fade behind, uh, even further behind the the already very cloudy overcast that seems to be perpetually uh, present during in, in this part of the, of the world. Um, out of the windows, you can see fires get snuffed out from like build different buildings, chimneys that were kind of pouring smoke into the air. Uh, they empty out, um, and the kind of like oppressive like beating of the wind against the house is the only sound to be heard um, in 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 the first floor at all. Toto kind of gives you all a nod and says, well, I'll be upstairs if you need anything. Um, don't hesitate to ask. Um, bundle up and be thankful that you're, that you've got a, a walls around you for now because you may find a time where they're not the available at all. Carol will just, um, check up her Melandra before she starts to and get ready to sleep herself. Uh, Melandra's kind of uh, back back by the chair near the fireplace. Um, she's like uh, pulled a pulled a, a book out of her out of her her um, sack that she carries. Um, she's jotting down some quick things uh, in there, and she sees you come over. She's got her full armor on and. Um, you get the sense that this is more just to try and have as much things around her as possible to keep her warm than anything else. Um, as you come over, she quickly f- like finishes what she's writing, shuts the book, and she says, well, not quite the journey in that I thought we'd have, but you fought well earlier. Thank you, ma'am. Um, how Just, are you? Are you holding on okay? I'm fine. Dear Caro, don't worry about me. Just a bit of sleep and um, be right as rain in the morning. I suggest you get some sleep as well. It seems like we'll need to be as sharp as possible almost around the clock in this place. Hopefully, Hopefully soon we can figure out what we're doing here and Get back to water deep before we both freeze to death. She kind of chuckles, but she's not really joking. <laughs> yeah, it'll be definitely nice once we get out of the cold. Um, isn't it weird that I mean you said that you were like in a lot of pain when you touched the knife I was freezing I didn't really feel anything do you (laughs) feel anything now in you didn't feel anything in your hand I mean like I felt like It was just, everyone else seemed to, like, react to it poorly, but I, I don't know if it was just sheer chance or whatever, but I was taking it somewhat better. I, I'm mm. not sure if that's coincidence or what. Perhaps. Uh, God's willing, if you aren't affected by the cold, then you're in the right place at the right time, but, uh, who knows, maybe, maybe just in the moment, the adrenaline was able to overpower the, the overwhelming cold. Maybe. I'm sure, I'm sure it's nothing. I'll 
I'll probably forget to get about in the morning. Yeah, get some sleep, child. It's going to be it's going to be an uncomfortable night. All right. Good night, ma'am. Good night. She kind of steps out of the chair a little bit, slides to the side and props herself up um, next to the next to where uh, the fireplace is and where the fire was roaring. Just kind of like nestles back, giving her kind of a good view of the of a majority of the room to the front of the beds. To the right is um, a back door that essentially leads to that stable area. Um, and um, she wraps a wraps a bit of a fur around her as best she can. Daxi, what are you doing? In bed already, <laughs> <laughs> but the the conversation had me had my interest peaked a bit, and I was I was listening. Okay. Quietly. So you're one of the beds right in front. Um, where I had sleep, where I had slept the previous nights. I was here before. Yeah, uh, the previous nights, you would have had to, being a bigger fellow, you probably pushed two of the beds together, but since there's a lot of people here now, uh, you kind of got to sleep in one bed. And the bed, it's, uh, it, it moans pretty sharply when you get in it, but it holds. Um, uh, as long as you don't thrash around too much in your sleep. Um, does anything, anything else anyone wants to accomplish before the night's over? Not I. All right. Um, as you guys all kind of lay, I would, I would assume, you know, awake for a bit since, uh, it's still early-ish in the evening. Um, but you know, you had a pretty solid skirmish today and then had to trek back um you know, probably half hour if not more to uh to dugan's hole um it's pretty impressive how quickly it gets cold and how the and how the temperature drops um with the fire not in the room keeping everything lit um it's like one of those moments where no matter where you have the blanket if one part of you is seems to always be cold uh and some of the furs are are made as thick as they can but they may not be even so like you go to cover your left leg and your right leg shoots out um your breath you know is visible even at nighttime it seems like because it's just the sheer numbing uh sensation of the cold and then the howling this perpetual howling of the wind um occasionally wrapping against the the side of the house um some of the shutters that were locked, the latch gets shot up, and you can hear kind of some of the shutters bang against the ha- uh, the side of the house. Um, it is, uh, well, for some of you, it's familiar. Um, for some of you, it's it's very, uh, very unwelcoming and very uh, <laughs> uh, troublesome feeling to to not feel safe where you sleep. Um, you probably get between all of you a good rough four hours, five hours of sleep enough to enough to at least feel at least be rested. Maybe you don't feel rested. Um, so for those of you uh, maybe new to like to D and D Beyond, there's like a long rest button you can press, and it should reset all your spell slots, um, reset your health, uh, and and things of that nature. So you should. You wake up the next day again probably earlier than you want to because we're doing long rest then yeah you do you do accomplish a long rest um four out of ten five out of ten long rest but it's rest uh in the safety of of turta's turta's hut um yeah once you wake up in the morning it's uh it's almost impossible to go back to sleep. And actually, uh, if you're a light sleeper, you would probably wake up to Turta uh, quickly coming down <laughs> at dawn and immediately stoking and trying to get a fire going in the fireplace again. Um, 
I would imagine Caro absolutely had a very, very light sleep. Uh, yeah, I mean, especially for you and Melandra. Melandra always had her eyes closed, but, you know, you kind of get the sense that it was still just as rough for you as it was for her. Um, even, um, even those that, are, you know, that are maybe staying downstairs near, near, uh, Danica, she, um, she kind of thrashes throughout the bed as well throughout the night, trying to, at one point, taking a pillow and instead of, like, laying on it, like, stuffing it under the blanket as well to try and find one more, like, ounce of, of warmth. Um, it, uh, it was, it was a cold one. But, uh, it's morning and the, um, the fires are now, uh, raging again and, uh, it's getting better. Uh, there's the, a smell of and a sizzling in the kitchen as Turta kind of takes what's left of uh, some of the fattier portions of the wolf. And to be frank, even those portions are, are very minuscule as it is, and she's kind of like trying to crackle and sizzle what she can uh, again of the stove um, to the northeastish side of the hut. Um, but um, it's... The next day, round two for uh, for some of you, round five thousand for the rest for for some of you as well. But uh, another day in the ice wind dells. What uh, what do you want to do? Kara would uh, desperately like to make a cup of tea. Um. <laughs> do you have you uh? Yeah, did you bring tea with you? Um, I'd, I'd assume so. Caro loves her tea. Okay, okay. So you have you have the leaves. So you kind of go up to Toto and she, and you kind of hand her to her and she looks at you and looks down at this like, I don't know, looks like shambles of like leaves essentially, and she goes, "Can I help you, dear?" I'll be able to just make this myself. Do you have, like, a, a kettle I can put over the fire or something? Hi, there's a kettle on the stove. What's a, what are you making? Why, well, you, you never had tea before? Tea what, dear? Y you know, like, tea. T-E-A, tea. Uh, is it, like, um, a spice you put on... Meats or it's a it's a drink. How how have you not survived such cold environments like this uh, without tea? She says as her teeth are kind of chattering and she kind of fumbles with getting the tea ready. <laughs> uh, and she kind of like she walks over like and helps you kind of pour 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 some of the uh, uh, warm water in a cup. Um, well, we, you know, in the morning, we usually just drink a warm cup of water or maybe some sort of broth to kind of wick the wick the motor up, as they say. Uh, we don't have any of your smelly, smelly branches or, or leaves that we add to anything. She's like, Carol is like very astonished, but is doing her best not to show it and not to like be completely culture shocked or anything she's just like you can you can try some if, if you want oh no mm. no dear that smells pretty bitter um i don't think i want any of your your leaf water to thank you uh, i'll have some broth uh, you're welcome to have some broth as well or drink your 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 dirty water, uh, but that's you know that's fine to each their own. I I mean it's not dirty, but uh, thank you for the offer. No, She'll of just course. kind of like take just take the kettle around and just like ask anyone in the room. Anybody care for some tea? What's tea? Well, as the uh, 
Madam in the Kitchen described it, um, dirty leaf water that is the uh, best drink since wine. To Quinn, I look over there. Tota, you've got any broth boiling? I did. Come have some broth. Um, but I'm sure the the T E A is delicious. I don't want any tea from the pub. Uh, don't be rude. Yeah, get it. up and while the right. tea tea debacle's going on, uh, check on Melandra and Danica. Um, Danica's up. Um, she's kind of like. Uh, just kind of sitting up, like looking around and watching everything going on since she really has nothing on her, nothing to her. She'll, um, um, uh, Miss, uh, Miss Turta, is, is it, um, do you, do you have any warmer pants or shirts or something? Uh, it's kind of cold here and, uh, all my clothes at, uh, outside of East Haven. Uh, and Turner will say, "Yes, yes, of course, dear. Let me go. Let me go see if I have something that will fit your uh, taller, scrawny nature." Um, give me one moment, and she kind of jets upstairs. Um, Melandra's kind of like still leaning against the fireplace now that it's warm, leaning maybe a little closer to it. Um, she hasn't gotten up yet. She's kind of like uh, just hanging there, like looking around. I will offer Melandra some tea. She'll take it, gladly. She kind of winces as she goes to like reach with her left hand to pick it up. Um, pulls her hand back down and kind of reaches with her right. I'll take it that it still hurts. Uh... It's, um, it's nothing to worry about. It, it, uh, still, still on the mend, I suppose. She sips the tea a little. <clears throat> kind of closes her eyes and, like, leans back some as it, like, kind of rolls down the back of her throat. I'd ask her... You ready to travel? Uh, of course, of course. And she like sets down the cup and like goes to roll over. Uh, she gets to like, uh, essentially, on all fours to try and like prop herself up. And you can see like when she tries to like put her feet under her, uh, especially with the armor on, um, she really struggles to find her balance and kind of sits back down against the wall and takes a deep breath eyes still closed Caro will scramble to help uh, she'll kind of put her arm up and then <sighs> I don't think I'm going with you uh, to East Haven I don't know that I could ride a horse walk uh, perhaps uh, another day of rest will will turn the tide. We could always just tie you to the horse. <laughs> she chuckles a don't little be, bit. Don't be so crude. The thought of bouncing around tied to a horse I don't think is... Uh, quite uh quite conducive to uh to getting better but i appreciate the the offer is that tea yeah would you uh would you like some yes i would please thank you yeah carol will happily uh Pour another cup and welcome Odaxi to the tea party. 
How much did you bring? I feel like she's rash rationing it. Mm-hmm. Now. Okay. Probably got like two more days worth of tea left. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have to, you know, maybe deal with the eventuality that the tea runs out. So, you know, That's, uh, <laughs> a tea problem. Yeah, so just uh -oh. something to think about. As uh, no, Carol we'll see. Tending to the tea, I, I would ask. Uh, I would ask. Uh, is she gonna survive up here? Who you're asking? I'd ask that to Melandra, but about Carol, while she's distracted and out of your shop or hopefully <laughs> she's uh Landra's kind of starting to like unhook some of her her heavy armor and she looks at you and looks at Carol and she's tougher than she looks she's got a lot to learn but more to offer I think I would just nod She starts to uh, unhook her her like large like breastplate and set it to the side and kind of looks at it and scoffs. It's Carol, you would know, probably less maintained than she would like, but given the circumstance, you know, it's it is what it is. Um, she'll um, she'll kind of gesture over uh, to looking at a Daxi and say, "Do you uh?" Mind taking another look at this, and let's see what we're dealing with here. Oh, Daxi? Oh, sorry. I was muted. <laughs> uh, yes, I will. I'll take another look. Kara like... will be um, at his side as well. She'll kind of, like, lift up and, like, expose... Like expose that like lower left rib area again and um you can see very clearly that uh it looks worse um the color hasn't changed but the color has expanded now it almost looks like a like a bad bruise but without the black uh more of like purple and blue and um the sort of um uh veins that that are there in that area you can tell like you can almost now discern that larger veins are also kind of starting to share the color and it looks like it looks larger um but it's hard to tell you know at a glance if it's just the full impact of the wound or uh, if there's something else going on there mm, we should get to what was the town east haven is the one that danica is referring to if that's the one you mean uh yeah and try to find someone with more expertise before this gets any worse oh you don't you don't need expertise you really probably just one chewinga maybe oh, the two chewinga, that was it yeah, but you gotta catch them first, um, and then you gotta convince them to help. Um, I don't really know if, what language they speak, if they speak a language at all. But first, then we have to get this Jimmy Changa lantern. Uh, well, it'd probably help to have the lantern just to make sure that they're nearby. But if they're still in that area, you don't really need the lantern. The lantern only tells you if they're within. Approximately 300 feet. So, it's not ideal, but it's something. Are these Chewingas either celestial, fiendish, or undead? Uh, wow. That's a, that's a lot to, that's a lot to think. Uh, I don't know. I haven't caught one yet. Well, may have something I, that can help us in the meantime. I think they're more elemental in nature, just given that they can sometimes uh, manipulate the elements. But I don't, I don't know. Every time I get close to them, 
something always gets in the way, you know, avalanche, pack of wolves, a weird creepy guy who tried to murder me. Um, I like avalanches. I like wolves. We're oh. heading to this place, yes? Well, you're strange. I think I you're food. strange. We don't need the lantern, and these are our best... This is our best chance, then... Is it back near the hill? Let's... It would be the opposite direction. Since... Uh, since uh, Danica was unconscious for all of this, she has no clue, but... From last night, basically on the discussions, you would you would know that East Haven's uh, more east, and you guys came from the west. Oh. So you'd have to go... The method of travel would likely be... Uh, Excuse me, to uh, to Goodmead and then to East Haven. I guess you could try to bypass Goodmead and just take a straight shot, would maybe shave some time off. But judging by the map, I don't think it'd be a lot. Well, we're really following her direction, isn't it? Uh, I saw these thunders. Yeah, I mean, I can I can take you to the inn. The inn's actually a little closer than East Haven, uh, so we don't have to go all the way to East Haven. Uh, probably like a little like halfway. It's kind of at the crossroads between Goodmead and East Haven and and uh, Bryn Shander and and Karn De De Well, we're burning warm weather. The Quinn's gonna go over and grab like a a bowl of broth, and goes over to. Melandra and guess mm, m Melandra um, hands the broth over towards her. You need your protein to help you heal. Melandra kind of like sizes you up for a second and then like extends an arm and grabs it and starts to to drink from it. You can see she also kind of like kind of like with the tea like anything warm like that's like goes down like is extremely comforting to her right now. you will give a nod and say, don't worry. I'll make sure I give your pup a lot of orders. And just gives a cheeky grin. Hmm. Well, good luck, I suppose. Caro, a uh, moment, please. She'll just, um, down the rest of her tea in a flash, and then, um, head over to her. In a bit of, like, a whisper, she'll kind of, like, 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 lean closer to you and go, Be careful. Be alert. And if anything happens... Leave these people, grab the girl, and run back this direction. Don't try to save the Minotaur. The other two are okay. She'll give you like a little pat pat on the armor. It's like her best best attempt at a joke you've probably seen in a while. Yep. For a second, Cairo doesn't realize this. But then she ends up getting it. Just like, right away, right away, of course. She, she looks at you sincerely and goes, be careful. Stay warm. Stay alert. You'll be fine. You're ready for this. If you don't see any of these weird chimichanga creatures... Don't spend don't spend all day searching for him. Just get back and we'll figure out what to do next. Yeah. I'll be praying for your well being. I'll pray for you. She kinda of prop herself up. This time mustering a little more strength than she had before now that the armor's off and she'll kinda of look her over and Turta? I'm gonna need something. I um, need a cloth, some water, and a bit of polish. 
and she's going to like grab her armor and kind of drag it and like drop it on the bed and begin to kind of like clean up some of the the like residue and blood from from the fight before Turtle comes down with like these these big baggy furs clothings and drops them off to uh to Danica and she kind of like you know tries on what she can and fastens it and ties it down to to um to 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 have like something more warm to wear Turtle goes over to the goes over to the gentleman and that's uh, in the first left bed kind of looks at him and frowns and just grabs his boots and then hands them to Danica and goes well he's not going to be needing them now dear so best you use them I'll call I'll call the speaker and someone from town to take him and bury him out back I suppose burn his body we'd best get going Do the horses stay up? Or are they coming with us? Seems important to be quick. Well, I'm definitely taking Tarragon with me. Uh, Melania goes, I, if you, if you need the horse, um, feel free to take, to take her with you. Davos, would you like a horse to sit on? Uh, I actually, I don't mind riding, uh, since, uh, I don't really have my snowshoes yeah, or my really, yeah. snow yeah, pants or my You'll snow shirt Ms. or my jackets. Oh, well, that works too. Settled then. All right, shall shall we get going? We shall. Turta kind of gives you. Before we go, go ahead. Maybe. Um. Oh, Turta, could we grab some of those salted meats that you acquired from the wolf? As you turn around, she's already got like a uh, like a basket of all of them, like wrapped in some 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 cloth. She goes, all right, all right, all right. I'm not going to let you leave hungry. Don't worry. Here. And she hands each of you, like, a, a, a ration of salted meat. Probably uh, something you actually want to keep track of in your inventory, since it's the uh, it's the frozen wilderness out here. Yes. I just tell her that the um, skins of the wolves are tanning in the back there. And she's free good, to have them. Good to know. Good to know. I'll, um, I'll definitely... Uh, Keep track of them and make sure that they get turned into nice, nice blankets or coats or something like. Do you need something in particular, or? They're for you. Oh, that's very really kind of you. That's kind of you, dear. For your for the night. Well, hopefully, I'll see you back here soon. We're going to uh, work. We'll, looks like we're going to polish them all and perhaps make some more for the coats. So, make sure you all stay safe out there. Or if you do go into town to, I don't know, for any reason, can you look around for some walrus wax or oil? My horns are looking a, a bit diminished. What, what, like walrus some... wax? Mm. Oh, dear, I can go ahead and tell you. As nice as Dugan Hole seems, there's not going to be any wax of uh, any matter to, uh, to apply to your horns. This place is a shit hole. <laughs> she kind of goes, hmm. Aye. But it's our shit told we do the best we can. <laughs> well, you... Once again, I'm just biting his tongue. Thank you for the hospitality. No problem, dear. Be safe out there. Always. All right. Is there anything you guys want to do before you leave town? Uh, do we just add one ration or two yeah, rations? Just, yeah, you can add one ration uh, okay. to your to your inventory. That's probably fine. 
just if you want to add one specific since you know that it's meat because um you know to quinn um that meat is can be scarce up here um then uh then that's fine as well um okay I don't think there's anything particular I would want to do for taking off. Uh, yeah, you guys haven't uh, kind of seen um, seen Dugan told as you arrive. It's uh, I mean it's primarily uh, it's it's a bit of a shithole. I mean, like I said, there's yeah, there's not a ton, but if you need like any sort of bait or any sort of um, you know, if you wanted to try and sell furs or even maybe purchase something that might be available, um, there's a uh, there's not a lot of people here. It's, it's like it's 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 a small town. So, um, uh, Adaxi, Caro, um, to Quinn, do you guys want to do anything, or you want to just take off? I'm all set. I'm it's the chimichangas. Ah, <laughs> uh, ch- chimichangas. Jimmy Tonga. You know what? Let's just let's just take off. That's probably best. You'll learn. Uh, <laughs> you think? Uh, yeah. So uh, as you guys walk through town, it takes it doesn't take long to cross it. You can kind of see the ramshackle shacks here and there. Um, people probably staring you guys down. You know, from out from from inside windows, you see people kind of maybe quickly. Uh, look at you and then see that you see them and then duck behind the window. Um, they don't get a lot of visitors here and uh, and even even more so than that, they don't interact with them, the few that they do get. Um, there is one uh, larger, uh, one more larger building. Let me see, pull up, uh, pull up the map so I don't lie to you guys here. Um... Yeah, one larger building in the center, uh, oh. and uh, it uh, leads directly to uh, to the right. There's a, a frozen uh, lake, essentially, uh, covered in ice. Uh, and there's a, some ramshackle docks and uh, a few people, uh, a few people, kind of trying to navigate some 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 smaller boats out on uh, out through these like pockets of of, of broken. I don't know, almost like uh, sheets of ice on top, and they crack the ice uh, and push push their boat. Uh, try to wade through the water to try and catch um, to catch some of the fish that are in in the lake. Uh, as you keep heading, uh, following the road to the east, um, it kind of follows the uh, follows the cave a bit. Uh, or, sorry, follows the cave, follows the lake a bit. Um, and you guys, you guys get on the way. It's Similar to uh, Caro, the road that you guys came in, uh, Adaxi, you came in on the same way just a few days or before. Um, it's it's hard to discern uh, given it's like white on it's just snow everywhere, but uh, because it's so worn and um, and traveled at least more frequently than the others, you can see there's some sled some sleds markings in there. Um, other footsteps uh, quickly getting filled in by the snow on top of you. Uh, it's cold. It's as it as it always is in this area. Um, you know, any exposed sort of skin quickly quickly gets numb as you start to trek through. Uh, about an hour into your journey, uh, you notice that the snow is starting to pick up more so, and um, the wind is is louder than even before. And it's actually getting hard to see even kind of uh, the the person in front of you. What's the uh, who's in front here? Who's who's kind of like navigating here? That kin probably. You, you take you take the lead. I I assume I could be taking the lead, but I, I thought that maybe Caro and then uh, um, Danica would be showing us the way. So I don't know if she'll be right behind me. Uh, yeah, Danica would just 
you know, she, as far as she knows, like from Dugan's Hole to to East Haven is follow this road uh, that just heads east, and it should hit. You should hit Goodmead before. Um, so that's she would just tell you guys, yeah, we'll just we we'll just follow follow to the east, and uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully we don't freeze to death or get eaten. But uh, yeah, we just gotta stay on this road. Yeah, nothing could nothing could go wrong. Yeah, sure. I'll I'll lead. I'll also keep an eye out for any like berries, mm. small game, or any leaves that my tribe would be aware of that you can boil and taste that Caro was boiling, like tea leaves. Okay, so you're kind of trying to keep an eye out for similarly looking uh, plants. Yeah, I would have a um like because Dequin's done a lot of cooking for his tribe, like he would know certain herbs and plants that would go well in water not necessarily like a tea but he knows that they go well in water okay uh as you guys are trying to um you know follow the road and to quinn you're kind of keeping an eye out for anything of substance to to stay alive um make a survival check Uh, yep. Oh, sorry, Definitely don't good. <laughs> don't, don't have my thing up here. I'm sure it's fine, right? You guys are just, you guys are doing good? Let's take a look-see oh. here. Uh, is everyone doing survival? Uh, if, if someone wants to assist him with navigating, I'll allow it, but no, not everyone, um, not everyone gets to roll. So if someone wants to try and help, they can. Uh... But whoever's kind of leading the party is the one that's kind of responsible for for pressing forward. I mean, I guess because I'm right behind him, I will help. Okay. This could only end poorly, but here we go. Okay. Yeah, the wind is the wind is ripping and uh uh, De Quinn, you think you see uh, what looks to be like um, like a, a, the remains of a, of a bush of sorts with some berries on it, and as you kind of like are focused on it, you uh, you start to kind of like veer towards it un- unknowingly, uh, and then before you realize it's oh that was just it was just nothing it was just a a, a weird like rock that happened to be covered in snow in a peculiar way, uh, you kind of look around and. You see that uh, the road that you're on is not is not underneath you anymore, and uh, Carol, you you turn around and you're like, well, we'll just you know we'll follow follow our tracks back the way we came, and and you turn around and do that, and then kind of you realize, well, you're following some tracks, but it's not your tracks necessarily. Um, all the while. Uh, in the back, if it's Davos or Odaxi, I'm not sure who's who's kind of bringing up the rear, but you can barely even see the people in front of you. The wind is howling. Uh, the snow is coming almost vertically uh, across you guys, not actually falling, but uh, being carried up by the wind uh, uh, and wrapping around you. And it's even hard to hear each other. You can see um, uh, Danica kind of turns around and, and mouths something to you, Davos, and... All you hear is that that just constant storm uh, uh, of snow around you. Uh, I, would, I would try to get up a little bit closer and close as possible and shout. I, I can't hear. Yeah, as so you get closer, the horses are kind of uh, a little panicky because they're uh, you know they're stuck in a blizzard and most of them aren't even used to you know, more than a couple inches of snow every year. Um, as you get closer and you start, <laughs> and, and as you get closer, Danico goes, uh, I couldn't hear you. What did you say? Perfect. Huh? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, you guys are now in the middle of, uh, of, a, of what is essentially a blizzard, and... 
it's hard to tell like which way is the road, which way is the way you came. Declan, you, th- you think you see another bush, but you're pretty sure it's that same damn rock that led you out here in the first place? Hmm. Um, knowing that like the bush is picking up, and I can tell that people are having a hard time seeing and hearing or whatnot, Declan's going to get his little drum or his pot from his back with a bit of skin over it, and he's going to like beat on it, just like a heavy beat. I assume we're not near any like mountains, I guess. I should say that first. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Do, you want to, do you want to check check for mountains real quick? Yeah, I'll check for mountains real quick. <laughs> Roll mountains. No. Roll mountain check over. <laughs> uh, no, you uh, look around and you can you can tell pretty quickly that like nothing substantial is nearby you. Um, you can see uh, uh, further. Well, you can't see now. You know, far off to the east is the the larger mountain range, this like the spine of the world. But um, uh, no, there's nothing to towering around you all right well i'm gonna just do a rhythmic beat on the drum so they can follow the sound of that and not get lost what's it sound like just that's it classic song of your people yeah classic song by the raven that's what i heard yeah, oh, that's definitely what it was. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, as so you guys hear, uh, or you see kind of uh, Quinn take out uh, a drum. What's your drum look like? You like a ho- homemade? Like a, an iron kettle pot with a skin um, tightly wound around it. That I say it's my drum, but it's just it's really just a cooking pot with a skin over it that makes a drum sound. Okay, okay. Um, so, yeah, you guys see Quinn kind of take this... Uh, take this pot out from from out of his bag and and either has skin on it or put skin on it i don't know i'm not yeah, really sure how that it, yeah. the skin's already on there so yeah. um and you play with your hands right yeah so he starts to drum drum this melody into the uh into the air and starts walking uh which direction are you walking or are you just kind of like just playing it while standing still uh, i assume we're still trying to follow some sort of tracks like i'm just at the front and caro and denica are just trying to give me directions well, caro so you're giving giving directions i hope not oh it was denica was showing us the way because she's been there before and then it was like just follow the road but uh uh yeah uh she's like I'm not again. I'm not gonna yell into everyone's ear, but she's like trying to yell, but she's still got that weird whispery voice to her. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where we are. Uh, I'll, I'll stop and just wait until everyone catches up. Um, everyone. We are lost, we are lost oh. with a minotaur playing a drum. <laughs> uh, everyone in the group, make a perception check. Um, Davos, as the group's kind of, as the group's kind of collected together, um, you kind of, you walk closer to DeQuinn, who's, who's drumming away on his, uh, skin box or whatever he's calling it, um, <laughs> and you can almost swear you hear an echo in the distance of that same riv- that same classic rhythm that he's played since you've been with him for the years, um, which I believe is... Da-dum, 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 da-dum. <laughs> it sounds like you hear it off in the distance. Maybe it is an echo. Um, we're all like grouped up by now, right? You know, he was waiting for us to catch up. Yeah. So I'll try to motion for everyone to be quiet and, and tell him to stop. So he's... Quinji's happening. I stopped my drumming. It's a moment goes by, and again the wind is like start. You guys now start. Your breath is like as it exhales, the heat forms a moisture, and fur and beard alike 
uh, it freezes instantly. So like, there's like this crusty buildup of like ice around all of your mouths, and in the distance you hear, da dum da dum da dum, da 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 dum da dum. Uh, and apparently some wind chimes. <laughs> Those just really kicked <laughs> I would I would uh, want to investigate that. Okay. And so I would kind of look at the twins and say, or motion, try to signal, hey, did you, did you hear that? Shake his head. As a no. With your perception roll, you can kind of get a sense of the direction it's coming from. Uh, it's coming from, well, since you have no clue what direction you're facing right now, it's coming from, like, your, your left a little. Um, I would motion for people to, to follow me, and I'd slowly start trying to head that way and follow the sounds. Yeah, the snowfall is, like, starting to, like, accumulate on the ground even more so, so every, like, step is getting a little more labored. Um, it's almost like you're less of stepping over the snow but kind of just striding through the snow as much as possible so there's these long there's these large holes and these kind of like large, like scrape marks almost the only ones really able to step up and over the uh the holes are the horses um and you get the sense caro that um that they're struggling as well even even mounted and kind of um uh, prepared for this cold weather they're they're starting to like slowly like lumber and 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 you know, cautiously step because they don't really know if they're stepping into each time. Uh, in the direction you head, Davos, you go 50 yards, 60 yards, 70 yards. And then from the right, you hear that da dum, da dum, da dum. So, like, not from behind me? Just nope. Kind of turn now. Okay. Yeah, to the right, yeah. So it's still playing, even though I'm not playing. Yes. Yeah, I would look around to see if anybody else is still hearing this. Motion um, my hands. At this point, you guys probably all hear the sound now that he's cued you into it and told you that it's it's still it's still happening. Then I, I press on towards the sound. Yeah, as you move forward, you start to pass these like kind of larger larger rocks and and different sort of like uh rocky masses i guess yeah i don't you know like it's hard to tell them covered in snow but you press forward a little bit and it's still open um there still seems to be like no foliage really in sight no no towns no mountains or whatever but as you get uh about another 60 feet or so you see this figure in uh in a robe with a hood up and it's in its hand it's gesturing and you see it tap rhythmically rhythmically on on something and it almost seems odd how long it takes but the sound does come to you again and you hear that the dum da dum da dum is it looking at us it appears to be facing your direction. It's hard to make out any features from from far away as you are, and and frankly, with like the the snow whipping in your face, um, it's hard to even look up because you look up and you've got ice crystals like shooting at your eye, you know, in your face and covering you, and it's 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 hard to to blink even by looking up. But it's like it's seeing the 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 outline of the shoulders and the hood. It's like it's facing your direction or facing the the opposite, but it's it's standing in front of you like it looks like it's looking at you and you can see the motion of it kind of like hitting something i would slow and cautiously keep going i i think the goal would to get would be for me to get somewhere where they could hear me do we all see it or just devils you would all see it assuming he points it out to you uh, if they, yeah, if they don't see it, I would continue. To... Yeah, kind of gesture in the direction of what you see, and I, the the group would the group would see it. Yeah. Devils. Mm -hmm. Do you think that they're playing a game? 
Should I, I know. beat back? I think as soon as they stop playing and then the sound goes away, I think I'm going to do the beat back on the drum. But a different beat. Okay. Dare I ask like what a... the new beat is? Because the last beat gave us da dum da dum da dum da 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 dum da dum. Just really quick. So you're just gonna drum line it? That's your. Mm. Yeah. No snare. <laughs> um. And then see if it gets played. So you, back. So you just play a really complicated, uh, rhythmic beat. No. Yeah, not complicated. Um, just different. Just, yeah, something different. There's a moment uh, where the, f the the figure you see is kind of just standing there, and then it you can make out some sort of movement from from its hands or from its torso area, and you hear some sounds that s try to mimic the beat that you're playing, but ultimately it, it's not one to one, and there's a pause, and it goes back to the da dum da dum da dum. Uh, just da 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 da. Yeah. And then I play the bit, uh, second bit. Da 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 da. And then like da -da. slowly walking towards it with the group. Yeah, da -dum. I think I'm just slowly approaching. Da dum da dum da dum. And then yeah, I just keep playing the same tune back and back and slowly approaching. Is it still just the one? person that we see is reciprocating yeah. this. It seems like this one tall figure. Um, and as you get closer, you start to realize it's actually really tall. Um, almost actually towering over you, because you're seven foot, right, uh, to Quinn? And uh, actually, you're pretty close to seven foot as well, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, so as you both get closer, uh, you start to realize that this figure is almost eye level too, if not maybe a little taller, but very thin. Um. And coming closer into view, you do see kind of like this sort of rocky, uh, rocky formation behind it. Not not like a not like a, a wall of stone, but just like a big boulder uh, rock. It's hard to determine how far, um, you know, how wide it is or how deep it is. But the figure is kind of standing in front of it. And how far away is it now? You guys are probably about 35, 40 feet away from it, tops. Right. And it's just standing there, not moving. He'll still play the same beat, but do like a little, a little dance along with it. Just like he's playing with a kid, which he's done plenty of back with his tribe. And see if he sees the shadow or the thingy move okay um there's like a there's like a moment where the the, the now that you guys are a little closer the top portion of the of this figure you see it kind of articulate like like turn it turn the shoulders to the right or to the left I'm sorry uh the middle portion begins to play a bit of the that rhythm back to you and then the bottom portion turns to the right sum it's a bit strange <laughs> um i'd like to divine sense okay Those just basically working out if this is a celestial fiend, undead, or neither. Yeah, you channel kind of your your um, your energy inward, and 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 like a it's almost like a a sonar goes out, and in the area you get no sensation of 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 undead or celestial. Was that the other one? Celestial fiend, undead. Yeah, nothing. Nothing seems to register nearby. I'll turn back to the group 
I say I think it's a game and I think they're just having fun I'm not sure but I think if we all dance or enjoy ourselves it shouldn't make ourselves seem scary or threatening I'll turn back around calling us yeah Dickwin's just gonna approach like 10 foot in front of the group and still playing the beat and just dancing you're gonna head towards the uh, the figure I'll be with him I see you guys are all walking a little closer to to the figure mm -hmm. um as you get within 10 feet or a little as you get as you get a little closer um again you know I, not to keep like using the same sort of uh a description over and over but you know like it does it's this this perpetual like kind of hazy vision in front of you um starts to give way a little bit the you can tell some of the snow is actually getting caught on this this rocky mass um this rocky mass uh in front of you and uh you take a couple of steps forward and the the, the figure that you see kind of kind of stops and locks up a little bit and the top portion turns to the right and the middle portion turns to the left and the bottom portion kind of straightens up and faces you um and a moment goes by another moment goes by and the wind uh catches this cloak that's covering this figure and rips it away and shoots it just far to the right um and you can see the figure kind of break into three pieces and jump the top portion jumping to the right the, the, the middle portion jumping to the left and the, the bottom portion staying where it's at um and to quinn as you kind of approach kind of like trying to to give the sense of 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 playful sort of uh 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 presence an arrow whizzes by uh and 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 actually ricochets off one of your uh one of your horns uh and you see before you like this the there was was once this one figure now stands these these bluish uh um reptilian looking creatures uh armed with uh with sword and the one to the left has this this long like jagged spear with like made a bone on the tip and and the one in the middle has this arrow that's he's he just missed barely the wind the, the roaring wind just causing it to like uh scream off to the left a little, a little higher of its target and it goes to knock another arrow and 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 aim at you again and uh i think that's where we'll stop for the night lovely did you leave a nick in my in my hold i don't know yet you had a polish i don't know yet i mean if he did he gonna become a hood ornament. <laughs> well, we'll have to find out next time. Uh, you would know. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Davos and DeQuinn again. You know, being from this area, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, you would all know. You'd all know because uh, Daxi, you're a huge reader, and Carol, you've been trained to fight. Um, these seem like. The, the bluish the bluish reptilian skin they look like uh uh kobolds but not of you're more you're more used to seeing like this sort of reddish or even maybe a brownish skin color um from water deep uh the water deep area or the southern area odaxi um you rec you guys recognize this as uh uh blue brethren of the same sort of species um and they seemed uh intent on uh making you a snack or at least uh, incapacitating you for something. Hmm. 
you mess with the bullshit. Here, I'll give what? you your. Here you go, guys. This is what you're waiting for. Is it playing? Because my audio is never working. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I figured it was it was getting a little later in the session to start the combat, so I didn't want to uh, to extend it too long. But um, but we can pick this up next session and go from there. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. I mean, unless you guys want to, unless you guys want to fight, it's eight thirty here. I don't know if you guys have plans. I tried to only carve out like a three and a half hour window. I mean, I'm good to keep going. That's because it's early in the morning for me. I am if everyone else is. Yeah, I am, but I don't want to pull anybody up either. Harpster? I'm in then. I'm in then. Peer pressure. Yeah. Peer pressure. pressure is strong. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, the session's back on. Um, let me. So let me first thing I need to do is drag you guys all here. Oh. You just don't I mean, like I was me. out, and then I heard the music, so like... It just... Oh, plus we need a chance to show off our cool tokens, y'all. Yeah. There we go. Does that work? Do you guys see anything yet? I, I see, see the kobolds. three kobolds. Alright. I see two horn ornaments. Let me, uh... Drop you guys in. Three kobolds are sadly not in a trench coat. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know the trench coat token yeah. that's tough to find <laughs> um oh god i have none of your none of your tokens ready let's see i thought i had them saved to drop in i did not i think you're using are you using this one sorry i'm talking to myself Uh... Oh god, dude, I'm using two different keyboards. I'm copying pasting on one keyboard, using the mouse on a different keyboard. It's a nightmare over here, fellas. There we go. Did we drop you in the deep end? No, I just I just can't operate two computers at one time. Not clearly, not normally. There we go. You, you seriously need like color coding or something. Oh my god. All right, so here's to Quinn. Um, you need to make sure that you can actually still operate your. No, you can't. I can already tell. Uh, there we go. Kara, is this a token we're using for you here? That looks right, doesn't it? Um, or is that Melandra's? I think that's um, Melandra's. There was like... There was a shield bearer one. Yeah. That she had. Wait, oh did the boy. new one get sent to you yet? or? Did you no? send me a new one? I'm... I'm not sure. Do you want me oh. to quickly send it to you now, or will that complicate things? Uh... Uh, you, do you have a new one? Yeah, I've just got a, I'm pretty sure I had it. Uh, did I send it to you? Where's my Loxodon? Oh. I deleted the map from the fight, which was a huge mistake because that has all my tokens. That's all right, though. We'll sort it out. Ba, 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 ba. I don't even know where my Loxodon token is.
<laughs> can you guys, uh, Davos and DeQuinn, you should be able to move your tokens, so just make sure. I can, thank you. Cool, 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 cool. Um... Were you wearing, you were not wearing a hat last time, were you, John? We said it not that token, correct? I'm gonna take your silence it as yes. It looks. I mean that. Yeah, yeah. The other one had like a pirate hat on. So yeah, that's the right one. Okay. Can you move your token? Yeah. Cool. And Caro, did you send it in Discord? You did. Um. Oh my. No. Yeah. Just my files are everywhere right now. Yeah. Trust me, I know the feeling. I could just throw you in. The, I think I should have your old token here. Oh, um, I just sent it now. That's going to be... That's not a PNG. Dang it. Uh, I had the same issue with Davos. Um, I'll make sure it is sorted. Out for yeah, we'll figure then. it out. We'll figure it out. I should have... Something... color hair do you want i think this is it isn't it actually this is canon this is this is set in stone now so make it work <laughs> yeah it was brown something now. similar to that right yeah all I'll make sure right the png sorted for that, next that's fine session. no it's my it's my fault i should have had all this ready i thought i did and i did not um so uh, so yes, yeah, so given that, uh, given that these guys have, have kind of, uh, um, lured you into, uh, into coming closer, um, they're going to get a attack round first, um, but you guys can all go ahead and roll initiative, so make sure you click your token, and then when you select it, roll initiative, because that way it will, um, it will actually... Uh, add it to the combat tracker. Did I not do that right? I had it selected. I don't think the combat track is up. Oh no. There we go. There it is. This is what everyone rolled? Yep. <laughs> okay, well that was pretty easy. And then I'll just do um, add a turn on this guy and they rolled pretty well and guess who just used the wrong keyboard again we're doing it live folks i, I did zero. i used the wrong keyboard <laughs> it was it was odaxi all <laughs> right um god damn it if you hear me swear that's because i did it again <laughs> um all right, so these three seemingly uh, jovial, um, uh, I don't know, mysterious mysterious folk turned out to be actually um, three kobolds standing on top of each other uh, in a trench coat, uh, luring you, <laughs> <laughs> luring you uh, closer so they can attack. Uh, and they're going to go first. Um... And the one in front of you, DeQuinn, is going to, um, he's going to actually take a few steps back. Uh, let's see. Yeah. And I think there's actually, switch over to this mouse. Um... He's gonna pull a uh, off of his back uh, a, a large like makeshift javelin, and and he's going to throw it straight at you, DeQuinn. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be um. Why did the suspicion that's not working? That is probably is when he hit my horn. I can instant an instant rage. Theming how I always want to keep it immaculate. I, yeah, I don't think that's... You're not getting an instant rage feature, I can tell you that <laughs> right now. 
with 100% without a doubt. Uh, it's going to be 16 to hit. Yeah, that hits. Um, and it is... Uh... Sorry, my Beyond 20 is not working for these guys right now, so it's going to be uh, uh, 4 piercing damage. Uh, and that's that's actually probably going to be this gentleman right here. And then he's got, after, after doing that, he's going to take a few steps back. You guys notice that they're kind of laboring in some of this deeper snow um, to, to, to move. Uh, this this one, is all he, difficult terrain. You get the sense, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be hard to move uh, forward. Oh, it's going to be hard to move in general, yeah. So probably going to have to be more work than it is... Uh, than it is normally. Oh God! Uh, for the sake of not taking another twenty-five minutes, uh, Carol, we're just gonna pretend you hopped off the horse here, and Davos, and left them kind of behind you as you got closer, because <laughs> you do not want to wait twenty minutes for me to add a horse and uh, Danica <laughs> to this to this engagement. There. We would have uh, seen there off. Let's see. This one's also gonna kind of. Oh, how close is Davos? One. Two, three, yeah. Gonna get up right in front of you, Davos, and come at you. Uh, pull out this like sh this small. Uh, it looks more like a sharpened stick than it does uh, than it does a, a weapon of sorts. Uh, but he's gonna come slashing at you. It's gonna be a five to hit. Does that hit your armor class, Davos? It it does not. It does not. You are sure? I know you're a sorcerer. Certain. I was prepared okay. to say yes, but the twist <laughs> uh, is coming. Yeah, as he goes, as he goes to uh, to swing at you, he just catches what he didn't know was a rock uh, un buried in the snow underneath him, and kind of face plants forward, missing completely, and then staggers like back to his feet, uh, and kind of snarls at you and looks looks you in the eye. Uh, this one is going to uh take a step back as well and uh fire an arrow at you uh DeQuinn. Um sorry, let me see here. Oh, yeah, I'll just do this. Uh a ten to hit. Uh then this is so the arrow, yeah, so again, kind of like fumbles and like p puts an arrow, knocks another arrow and, and shoots at you. And in almost like a, a Looney Tunes sense, as soon as the arrow is released, it immediately like catches the wind and then shoots to the left uh, and then just disappears somewhere <laughs> in the snow. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, up next is uh, DeQuinn, I believe, right? Uh, yeah, I, I would like to rage. Okay. And seeing how my friend Davos is in trouble. Try not to squish your things. I'm going to attack that coal. So, another thing. Would I have. Are we doing flanking rules? Um. Flanking rules will be uh, a plus two to hit. If a friendly is directly across, so it so has to be. So in this case, yeah, this is flanking, um, but it has to be exactly across. It can't be like slightly, you know, catty cornered or anything like that. Yep. Come yeah, that's fine. And I will attack with my great axe. So plus two to hit that, correct? Yes, yeah, so it'd be twelve. Um, that does not hit. Uh, hearing you kind of crunch up behind it, it, it just manages to kind of duck out of the way as you shave off a little, uh, a little bit top of the ear there. It kind of turns around and snarls and, and starts to mouth something at you. You're gonna make a good horn ornament. It's it's this slithery sort of um glutteral response back to you and that's my goat uh who's up next up next is uh caro all right well 
figure I'm not gonna get anywhere close this turn, so I'm just gonna throw a javelin at this little dude here. Okay. How do I uh, how how do I weapon in this? Uh... <laughs> how do you weapon? Is that what you said? <laughs> go. Okay, no, go. I, I think I got it. Yeah. Nice. What do I do? My man's drawing a T down there. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm trying to just figure out the distance like she did. But I don't know what the tool is. Um, I also so... don't know how to delete. <laughs> So on the uh, top left, there's like um, a little circle with a ruler in it that can get you to do the measurement stuff if you yeah. click on it. Oh, okay. I oh, yeah, got it. Okay, it. cool. Dime to die doesn't make any sense. I'm still not sure why I have no capacity to clear all the nonsense <laughs> you guys draw on here. Yeah, I don't know how to. Yeah. The get back up to. Your pointer arrow on the top left toolbar and click that and then select the move and as soon as you click that you can pick your drawings and delete them got it <laughs> uh did you figure out how to throw a javelin yeah did you oh i'm sorry yeah. 24 to hit yeah a 24 100 hits uh actually i'm sorry uh, i need you to roll again you have to roll twice uh the, the wind is whipping so hard uh, you have to kind of refocus and make sure your shot's actually going to connect. So oh, no. uh, your range attack's going to be a disadvantage. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, uh, you know, you, you, when you first lined up the javelin, oh, I may be unfortunately lying to you. Let me double check. Um, yeah, as you, you your first, your first uh, instinct was correct, but then you start to overcorrect because you do feel the wind kind of creeping up on you. And as you release the javelin, it just falls short of the kobolds you're aiming at and sticks into the ground. Okay. After that, I guess I'll just have to move forward a little. So, half movement, right? Yep. One, two, three. Um, oh, I just realized my... Why are my peoples not seeing any of this? Let's see. Sorry. One moment. There we go. Hopefully that updated. Okay. <sighs> Gotta click the link on my other so that it's actually recording the combat here. Um, as you turn that corner, Caro, you see a sneaky little fourth kobold right here. Kind of hiding oh. in the bank waiting. It just... It, it was just prepared to, to make a, a stab at you, but you just happen to be outside of its reach, and it can't it can't connect. Um, up next is Davos. I think that's Odaxi. That's, that's uh, Odaxi. I lied. You guys look similar. A Loxodon and a, a very, very human, human sorcerer. Uh, I'm going to attack that one that popped up with sacred flame now cantrip that's not going to take a spell slot right no cantrips do not right all right i'm going to hit him with sacred flame okay you have to roll a disadvantage as well because there's so much uh interference Even it's kind of hard her... hard to see it okay and, yeah because it's a ranged attack still okay it's a save i think oh is it just a save no the target must succeed on a dex saving throw but it hits automatically. I don't know. I don't know. We'll just click the uh, if you click the name, it'll pop up in the uh, chat, and we can sort out. You're probably right, actually. Um, yeah, it's fine. So it does automatically hit. So now I will roll his save. Uh, he does not save. Which one are you hitting? Just so I know. The one that popped up on the right. Oh, okay, next right there. The arrow. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. I'm like a damn DJ with all these mice I'm manipulating right now. Um, <laughs> I can only imagine. 
Okay, what's uh, what's the damage on there? Seven. Seven. So it fails. So it takes the full seven. Uh, so yeah, this you see this one kind of like pop out of the snow, and like the snow kind of shoots out around it, and it like shakes it off, and then it goes to goes to make a swing at um, at Caro, uh, missing though it kind of lurches, and then it, j- it just manages to turn and see you um, with your hand around her holy symbol, kind of chant, and then instantaneously there's just fire all around it. Uh, for a moment, it feels kind of good, you know, to have to be warm, and <laughs> then it realizes that the flame's not going out. It's only getting brighter. It's only getting hotter. And its hide armor starts to catch catch on fire a bit. Um, it's looking it's looking pretty hurt actually. Um, you get the sense that these are not the sturdiest of creatures and rely on ambushes to actually get anything accomplished. Uh, is there anything else you want to do? All right, and then I'm gonna move to just move up further. That's okay. It. Um, and now we're at Davos. <clears throat> All right. Uh, I'm going to cast Infestation on oh, that dear, one over there, the one dear, that popped out. God. All right. What's Infestation? Do I even want to know? Uh, I've got to figure out how to cast it first. Um, I'll click at will. There it is. Uh, constitution check. I send uh, a whole bunch of insects out of my hands. Uh-huh. Oh, that's, bigger. that's bigger than 16. Oh, that's bigger than 13. Uh, well, you know, let me check their modifier because they are not the uh, the sturdiest there. Oh, okay, so it's actually a 17. Uh, so what kind of what kind of uh, insect are you are you conjuring? Oh, always bees. <laughs> always bees. <laughs> <laughs> Like like murder hornets, like the real deal. So, uh, from um, from Davos's hand, just this eruption of always bees comes shooting out and flutter towards. Uh, I'm sorry, one more time. This is the one in front of you. I'm sorry. No, I went for this uh, this one over here. Okay. Uh, yeah. Kind of shoots around Caro and Caro. You see this swarm of just. A creature that probably shouldn't be even, you know, in this area just go and completely, like, uh, dive bomb uh, this cobalt that jumped out at you and stinging it and biting it. And it's swatting a bunch of them away. Uh, and then they just kind of sort of dissipate, like, into nothing. Um, and left in front of you is a kobold who is partially singed, now has large lumps and uh, whelps all over its body, can barely, like, keep one of its eyes open. And it's kind of, like, kind of, like slurring and slander and and swearing uh, at you under its tongue. Um, if anybody speaks Draconic, I think you do, right, Odex? I do. You hear into the wind this fucking, fucking, what the fuck were those? <laughs> those thingies? I chuckled yeah. myself. Uh, it's barely able to stand in the snow with the, with the blizzard beating around it. So it says that he also moves. Yeah, in a random that direction. That didn't hit though, did it? Oh, I thought it did. No, it's, I think you saved. Oh, never mind. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I, th- I was thinking to save its half, but it's not. It's just no, a save not or nothing. Like yeah. No, uh, okay, 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 okay. Um, but the, but the bees were there. The bees were there, and he is still bitten and swollen. That's canon. So write that down. That's canon. Uh, it's in the notes. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, he's still standing, still kind of uh, trying to keep his balance. Uh, anything else you want to do, Davos? No. All right. Uh, back up at the top. Um, my B boy. He is going to turn and run. He wants nothing to do with this anymore. One, two, three. Uh, and from there. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter. It's going to turn. He's going to throw what the javelin in his hand. He's going to throw at Caro um, while still trying to run away. Uh, it, it, he's not even able to, uh, t- to even really like get a good grip on it because his hands are so swollen. Uh, the, the, the javelin lands almost immediately in front of him right here, coming not even close to anyone. Actually, almost coming back and hitting himself more than hitting any, anyone else on the other on the other side of this here. Um, 
We're going to do another uh, dagger attack at Davos from this one right here. That's uh, going to be a nat 20. Yeah, that'll uh, be Let's see. Uh, I think it's a... It's going to be four points of damage to you. They actually... I mean, they lose points uh, when they swing. <laughs> they actually have negative two uh, strength. Uh, so yeah, so this time, uh, as you're distracted, so kind of conjuring these bees up, it's able to get to get uh, to get uh, get closer to you and kind of like slice uh, slice at your um, your midsection there. Um, <laughs> these these two in the back here, unconvinced that they're that they're not going to be able to hit uh, to hit um, Da Quinn. They're going to both uh, throw another throw another javelin and uh, shoot another arrow. Be nineteen and nine uh, with the the javelin because that guy just happens to be further away, not even close. Um, actually, is that the modifier for that shot? Um, Yes, it is. Okay. Wow, these guys, you know. Uh, so it's going to be four to you, to Quinn. Reduced to half, right? Because you're raging now. Okay. Um, and they are going to kind of take one more step back here. Uh, and that's the Cobalt turn. De Quinn, you're up. Seeing that Davos get stabbed, he's going to try and slice it. Double rage. Spot. In half. Oh, I get. I just realized you guys can't even see this. Go ahead. What? I'm sorry. I, I just realized that like my broadcast was even centered on actually the entire action, so there were people randomly missing from the screen. But we fixed it. We fixed it, guys. That fourteen hit. Uh, a fourteen does connect. Yeah. Four fifteen damage. Yeah. Jesus. Uh. Yeah, how do you want to completely eviscerate this uh, this guy in front of you here? Just literally just at the hip, straight through the hip, decapitating him. Straight through the hip, you said? Yeah, straight through the hip. Through the hip it is. Uh, this guy is just cleaved into pieces here. Um, he is no longer a threat to anyone. <laughs> um. And then one, I think I can only get to the, in front of this guy. Okay. That's all I can do. All right. Uh, next is Kara. All righty. Uh, one, two, three. Hello. Time to time to smash a cobalt with a hammer. Yeah, go ahead, make an attack. Yeah, that uh, that will also do it. <laughs> that will uh, bring the hammer down. Uh, how would you like to finish this? Really, probably the saddest cobalt because no one really gets stung by bees. You know, out in the middle of a of a tundra, uh, but this guy did. You know, bacon on it. it didn't hurt him, but he was allergic. So now him he's right on his burns. He's allergic. Yeah, he, he was burned, and now yeah, and he was and he was allergic. So now he's like, he's not dying, but he's kind of like it's hard for him to breathe, and it's, it's like his throat's closing up on him a little bit. Um, I just kind of. Give him like a solemn look and then just whack my hammer clean across his head. <laughs> Almost as like to put him out of his misery. Yeah. <laughs> he just as 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 soon as it connects, it just uh, tongue kind of falls out of its mouth and it just plops over to the side. It is no longer among the land of the living. Uh, do you want to do anything else with your turn? That's all I can do. All right. Uh, next up is Odaxi. <clears throat> I am going to... Come back.
command. Okay. The one holding the bow. All right. What uh, word do you want to use? I'm gonna. I'm gonna say drop. Okay. I'll even give you advantage. What's actually? I'm sorry. Show me the. Uh, I'm not always familiar with some of the spells. Um, what's the? Um, see, it's, it's a saving with, throw. Yes, it makes it. Yeah. So wisdom saving throw. Yes, make a wisdom saving throw of thirteen. Uh, I'm gonna give him disadvantage because you actually speak draconic. Mm. So I say drop it, dr draconic. Well, I'm gonna assume you do because you're a clever guy, right? And you heard earlier them speaking draconic. Uh, perhaps I shouldn't put Sorry. words in your mouth. Well, I think, oh, I didn't yeah, even that's good. That. Um, yeah, so there's a moment of like it, it kind of like shaking its head and, and fighting the, these this echoing whisper in its head, but um, then it just kind of realizes that yeah, why would I carry my bow? I just need I need to drop it, and so it does. <laughs> Uh, give me one second. I'm going to switch off my wireless headphones because they're dying. Just give me one moment as I rotate over to my wired headphones, which aren't as cool. All right. Uh, do you want to do anything else with your turn? Uh-oh. Uh... -oh. uh now I can't hear anybody. Mic check. I fudged something up, guys. This game's not going to be fun anymore if I can't hear anyone. Let's try these. Anyone say something for me? Hello. There we yes. go. All right. Well, we're, t we're on the nerdy headset now, guys. The non-nerdy ones weren't working. Um, go ahead. It. I'm sorry? Embrace it. Embrace the <sighs> nerd. Embracing the nerd. Uh, okay. Uh, Odaxi, did you have anything else? I moved. That was it. Okay. Did you just yell sausage at me in chat? That's yeah, very yeah, nice yeah, of you. Yeah, I uh, definitely did. It, it may have come up. <sighs> we all, when you said mic check, like, we all said sausage. Dear God. I didn't. Aw. I knew I liked one of you. Uh, Davos, you're up. Okay. Uh, I'm going to move up here, and we're going to B-City this guy. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, well, maybe he's lurked, too. Interesting. <laughs> 16. Come on, man, stop. I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry. I just roll a 20. It's just Trying to have fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, again, this swarm of bees just erupt. And this one, these times before they can actually even get to uh, the kobold, they all just drop dead from the cold and just fall like right in front of Odaxi and DeQuinn. Oh no, the poor bees. And then they disappear because they were never really there in the first place. So, <laughs> anything, anything else, my friend? No, I'm just Googling insects that live in the cold. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Keep me updated. Uh, next up is our friend's turn. Um, command, do I need to make a, do I need to make a wisdom saving throw at my turn or what? Uh, is it just Oh, actually, if it didn't understand Oh, I understood the comments, so it doesn't matter. I think if the command's just one turn, so I think it, it did its command, and now it's kind of like looking around, and it's like, and it like looks down and sees its bow. Um, rather than bend down and pick it up, it's going to grab a dagger and run towards uh, DeQuinn here and take a stab at him. Um, does a two hit? Feeble attempt. <laughs> uh... Alrighty then. Um, oh. Oh no. It's not getting any desktop audio. Now it's not getting anyone's stuff. Let's see if that fixes it. Uh, can someone say something for me real quick? Hello. 
Yeah. Okay, so it is picking up your sound. So. I meant sausage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to give clear instruction on what to say and what not to say. Uh, okay, uh, and then finally, the last one. It's going to continue to retreat here. Um, and it's going to try one more javelin throw, I think. How many fucking javelins do these guys have? We'll say this is his last one, to be fair. Uh, 12 Adaxi, does that hit? I don't think no. that definitely doesn't hit your armor class, right? No, it doesn't. All right, so this guy I is going... 16. This guy's actually going to take off this way. One. I think he was here first, so it's going to go one, two, three. Um, and that's their turn. DeQuinn, you're up. Lovely. I would like to decapitate this one in half vertically, please. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, okay. Well, you know, let's make a hit first. Did you? Oh, yep. You did it. You did it vertically, too. Uh, okay, did you want to add any more flavor than that, or you're, you're quite good? Uh, well, as a bonus action, I get to horn something, and I generally wanted, if he survived it, to horn this guy and push him back against uh, that guy. No. Can push him back ten feet. He didn't. He didn't survive it, my friend. That's okay. You I just literally cut him in half like an apple. <laughs> yeah. I kind of want to like cut him in half and then just like peel him aside I mean, and just walk, <laughs> boss slowly walk toward this guy. Dual wield the two halves. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you, you killed him so well that. His like family is also feeling a, a, a psychic damage <laughs> from across the ether. Oh, no. um, Scratch my hole, you pay. <laughs> this one goes. <laughs> um, Caro, you're up. To do, yep, still in range for another uh, javelin throw because I was gonna smack it with a hammer, but they got too far away. <laughs> Welcome not, to the snow. They're not the most bold fighters either. Um, still at disadvantage, I assume. Yeah, any ranges. Uh, that's still gonna hit, though. Those are nice rolls. Those are Those really are good rolls. rolls. I like them. Her aim is true. <laughs> the power of tear is in me. <laughs> uh... As this one's starting to like, and it's actually probably facing this direction because it's trying to like get the f out of town. Um, a, a spear just manages, and actually, you this time knowing which way the wind's blowing, you throw into the wind enough so that the wind brings it back. Um, and it's actually a Daxi and even Davos. You see, this is a pretty uh, well thrown javelin in the sense of like. It looks like it homes in and catches this kobold like right in the back thigh, um, and uh, it, he's now got this large protruding javelin like jammed into uh, jammed into his leg, uh, and he's barely able to even kind of stand up on it. Uh, did you want to do anything else? One, two, three. I'm honing into my target. Okay. Um, Why did you face me when you said your target? <laughs> I think that up next is Odaxi. <laughs> She's been a spy this whole time. One session in, she reveals her spy. <laughs> uh, Daxi, you're up. Oh, sorry. That's uh, all right. Yeah. Uh, you're, just, One, you're just watching the two, bees, huh? Three, I'm up next to to deck you in here i'm trying to rotate but i can't uh you're it not gonna too much. i, I can't don't know read. yeah because your character is technically uh, i guess we never really gave you a back well, i was here visually. right yeah so one. i'm just counting my four squares as one so i'm only going five at a time right five one two three and then i should be able oh right i see what you're talking about yeah um We'll just say from now on that well, like then this... I could just I could just yeah from now on we'll we'll do it that way but I can just cast uh, I can light him on fire again. Okay. 
Yeah, why not? I mean, why move when you can just light things instantly on fire? Yeah, sacred flame. Uh, uh, so he, he needs to roll 13 dex saving throw. 11. So <laughs> now, now this poor creature as it's trying to like scurry away, uh, the end of the, uh, of the javelin lights on fire and then like slowly <laughs> works up the end of the javelin towards the back of his thigh. And, uh, before you know it, like catches like his rear hide armor on fire, uh, and well, only now, for two. Now his ass is on fire. He is uh, he's hurting. He's uh, one knee down in the snow, kind of um, barely able to, uh, to 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 keep his feet under him. We'll say from now on, uh, just to try to keep up with this, is that your your front left square. Will always be the one that kind of, uh, well, okay. If you turn, well, yeah, yeah no, I don't know. If I rotate, yeah. We will have to figure something you. out. Yep, front left square. I got it. Yeah. So it'll well, always be it'll always be this icon. left tusk. Yeah, but next time just make my icon like deck. Whoa. Yeah, that's the problem. It's the <laughs> sizing. It's weird. <laughs> uh, let's just say so. This tusk is always your square. Got okay. It. And even if yeah. you rotate, so like even if you rotate your character like like this way, that's one movement space, right? Right, just to be, just to try it. We'll, oh, we'll sort I it see. out. Yeah, we'll yeah. we'll figure it out. It's it's not gonna be game breaking. Uh, anything else you want to do on your turn? No, I move to. I move okay. Ten feet. All right, Davos. What? This give us, give us, give us it. Been waiting for. Give us the, give us the animal. Uh, nothing. No insects like cold, so that was that didn't work. But oh shit, I mean, we're gonna try it anyway. Fantasy bees. I'm sorry. Uh, fantasy bees. <laughs> the bees. Winter uh, bees. <laughs> they're new. They're just bees, but blue. It's they 2020, have, man. They're like bumblebees, but they have thicker fur bees. coats. <laughs> All right, let's see. Better roll uh, a low number this time, though. Uh, oh, that's weird. It rolled hidden. But it was a one, right? It was a eight. So yeah, that'll do it. Uh, he'll take two poison damage. Oh my gosh! All right, how do you want these fantasy bees to consume this? This oh, uh, well, they go in his mouth. I I I, I was actually going to add that <laughs> flavor to it because I figured that's what you were going to say, but I didn't yeah, want to put the like, word. I didn't want to put the bees in your mouth, metaphorically speaking. You know, I like it. Yeah. And uh, ears. Oh God! All right. It's, it's your it's your game. I'm just here to just here to relay the information to you. So, uh, stumbling back, stumbling towards the back of this rock, um, it, at the javelin now in its left thigh, it's like dragging the left leg more. Uh, the left, the whole left side of his body singed from Odaxi. Uh, it turns to like mutter one last like curse under its mouth. Uh, uh, Odaxi, you would hear it as uh, a common uh, swear. <laughs> You know, whatever the equivalent of fuck you is in Draconic, right? And uh, as he opens his mouth, sausage. a swarm of bees. Sausage, I think, is actually yeah, the right thing. Suck a sausage, is that what he says as he's, like, stumbling away? Uh, <laughs> a swarm of bees enter into his mouth and into his ears, and then there's, like, weird gyrations from his body, and he, <laughs> he just kind of coughs and magic just dark dust comes out and just kind of dissipates in the snow and he just like, falls over flat behind him canon must reflect that i posted that gif before you said weird gyrations yeah exactly <laughs> I what, saw it too. what <laughs> gif look in the chat oh my god i'm trying to run a very serious <laughs> rhyme of frost <laughs> And he posted that like seconds before you're like he starts making weird gyrations. <laughs> well, um, when I post this to YouTube, you can add that gift for everyone and timestamp it so they can have that <laughs> they can share that moment with everyone. Um. Oh God. Uh, yeah. So that that guy's dead. He dead. Um. <laughs> We're heroes. <laughs> uh. As the wind kind of uh, continues, <laughs> to, to, again, this this wind is ripping around you guys. Um, 
since you've kind of moved up to the north more, you actually, you can kind of see a glimmer of light over, over in this direction. Um, which is strange because given all the wind, did you guys see it or did you just clicking randomly somewhere else? I thought you said over here. Yeah, right here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I thought, did it move you guys there? Does it move your roll 20 there or no? If you hit shift. I did hit shift. Then yes. All right. Well, whatever. Here we are. <laughs> um, there's a light, a, a, a light flickering kind of uh, underneath this like overpass of, of rock. Um, and uh, you get the sense that maybe like that's where this guy that was going before he was massacred by bees is was actually heading javelins now <laughs> javelins and arrows kind of litter the snow we've got ground a around you and even even though he like freshly died uh uh moments ago this cobalt to the south of you guys uh down here is kind of starting to already get covered by this torrential snowfall yeah i Picking my javelins up again, making sure I don't lose them again. <laughs> um, just make a perception check for me. Uh oh. Well, just because you know, some of them may have landed flat and are starting to get covered by snow. Um, I lost my javelins. Yeah, you're able. To, you, you go to grab one, and it's the uh, it's the one that one of the kobolds was using. It's not one of your finely made ones. Um, I'll say you can add it to your uh. Your inventory, but it has um, negative. We'll say it's a negative one, negative one to hit, negative one damage. So it it's no. sharp. She doesn't want it. So you can drop it if she wants. <laughs> is uh, I, I is don't that... want it. I Carol only Landro, wants the finest. <laughs> the finest of wares. <laughs> All right, is you that trench coat around. Make a perception check. Come on. No, it's it, it, given everything going on, and and you saw the wind kind of carry it, almost like it had a a a, a body or mind of its own in into the into the ether. That trench coat's one with the universe right now. <laughs> uh, what about the drum they were playing? Is that drum around anyway? Um, drum collector over here. Sure, make another perception check. Everyone's looking for something specific, I guess. So we'll. No, hard to... Actually, you did find the drum. Uh, as you were going to chop your second kobold in half, uh, you heard a, a rather peculiar crunch as you stepped right before you cleaned him in two. Uh, so you found the drum, but it's your hoof went through it. We so, now I know... Every single one of us have a drum. <laughs> Do you now have a drum as well? who has the drum. I'm going to golf swing that kobold literally away because he tricked me i thought we were having fun you're gonna do what to him golf swing it oh you're gonna okay there you go you're just gonna tee it up huh mm -hmm. you guys watch as uh the quinn the sharp side or blunt side do i even want to know that answer <laughs> flat side oh my god so with the resounding kind of meaty thud you see uh, Odak, his head's beheaded, isn't he? He's cutting off. Yeah, He's so ready. just this like floppy upper or bottom half of the torso. Upper, yeah, I would I assume. In this direction, I assume. <laughs> Which direction? Oh, okay. I thought you made maybe, <laughs> maybe towards Odak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was, there was a there was a moment where maybe Carol gets hit in the face by a floppy, uh, decapitated or. Uh, split in half, Cobalt. But will I need to make his saving throw? No, <laughs> he shot it. He shot it. He shot it to the north, uh, northwest area over here. So, okay. um, no, you're fine. It kind of flops and rolls and comes to a stop. Trick me again, little fools! Oh, devils, devils, devils! Can you check my horn, please? I'll bend down so I can have a good look at it. Is it damaged? Um, it looks fine. I guess I'll go and check the shiny as this is going on. Okay. They're worrying about horns. As you step over kind of the remainder of um, of the kobolds, 
Um, you see a new half of Cobalt laying up against the, cav the, the base of the rock formation here. Um, you see the the wind or the uh, the covering of this this boulder uh, and this light flickering leads kind of deeper into a tunnel. Um, at the very least, though, this tunnel could provide temporary cover from this kind of onslaught of blizzard in front of you guys. Uh, we should. I will direct grab... everyone's attention. What do you want, Pop? This could be some shelter or something for us. We wait for this all to pass. Get out of the snow. Go back and grab the horses and Danica. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Danica's kind of like huddled up with like <laughs> three snow. furs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Her. <laughs> uh, uh, we could call them over or go back to them. Was 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 the what was the drum? Mm. <laughs> Bring her over. Oh, okay. Okay. Coming a little over. My bellowing voice. Get over here. <laughs> no. Wait, do, does it come at your, your trunk? <laughs> so oh, I, can, try to I, yell? Can, I can yeah. make it. I can make it. I make a trunk sound first and then say, come. We have shelter. Yeah, your your trunk your trunk can't <laughs> your trunk your trunk can't form words, words like you need your right, lips right. for that. You so sounds, you right. can make sounds to it, yeah. But I can go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> as you uh, as you guys pull the horses around and Danica kind of half frozen, covered in probably like six inches of snow at this point. Um, get pulled into the cave uh we will definitely take a break there and you can, guys can decide if you want to see how deep it goes or try to get your bearings and press forward uh from there uh but good news is you guys are all level two what you're the best how do we do that we're so oh. good at dungeons and dragons <laughs> and and D and D Beyond, you should just be able to uh, drop down your. Oh my God! I found a secret button in D and D Beyond. It's just a dancing wizard. Click what to enable that? party time. What? 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 Is this? what? Uh, uh, hold on. I'll send a little screenshot. <laughs> we want to know where the button is. <laughs> it's uh. So there's quarantine resources, and then like maybe a hundred or two hundred pixels away from that, on the right, there's like a clickable. I don't have that. What the oh hell? Gosh, you're right. Hello. Oh yeah, I found it. It's like it's it's more than a. <laughs> I accidentally just. It's like right under your that. name, isn't it? Yeah, right under your name. Yeah, and it says "click to enable party time." <laughs> Flashing color warning. And if you click it, it stays there. You're probably yeah. enabling some sort of dev mode or something. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, how do we level? Uh, if you go to your character and uh, just click your name. And there's a manage levels um, underneath because I don't think they actually have a level up button, do they? Oh, I see manage levels. Yeah, yeah and then once you once you select two, you'll it'll kind of it'll pro proliferate with like all whatever level two options you have. If you get to pick more spells or, oh, um, you yeah, see, so you might get some more spell slots. I'm not 100 percent sure. Or some people get their, uh, uh, yeah, get their difference unlocks and things like that just really depends on the class divine smite divine <laughs> this changes channel everything divinity. Yeah, knowledge channel. of the ages oh boy what's that one do tap so. a divine well of knowledge as an action you choose one skill or tool i, d I don't know i don't know <laughs> okay. even after reading the whole thing okay. i have no idea okay. what it solid, does solid. i'll have to google it uh, oh turn undead is what i got yeah. Really. And then knowledge of the ages is something else. It's not proficiency uh... with the chosen skill or tool. So I get to be proficient with any chosen skill or tool. Oh, that's cool. And you can change yeah, it at cool. will per rest? Uh for ten minutes. Yeah. Oh oh it's channel divinity, so you can use it once. You pick whatever you want and then it's used for until, until you I have a long rest. Channel. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That's actually your, pretty cool. How do you change your hit 
points because it's not. Oh that. yeah, how do we mine, do hit points? Um, mine went automatically. Mine only went up two, which is my. Mine went up by seven, which doesn't make sense. What's your con modifier? My con oh, it's modifier. A lot. Is, yeah, that's my, why. My con modifier is two, but that's all it went up when you go to level one, from level one to level two here. It depends how you did your health if you did it by uh, manual input or uh, auto. No, it should have been auto. When you create auto, character. yeah, it, it's kind of a pain to do a manual override. I feel mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. Um, the sorcerers get one d zero, hit point mod <laughs> hit point die. I thought I remember. One d zero. I think I would have noticed that. <laughs> um, yeah, we can toy around with it and see if we can figure it out. Maybe. It brought me up to seventeen. Yeah, I'll have to figure out where that roll came from. I guess. It probably sure. doesn't automatically. Um. It gives you. It, it probably gives you the average automatically, then plus your con modifier. Um, Mine didn't. I think clerics. I think you, what do you get a one d eight? Yeah, I don't know, Davos. We'll have to. Oh, you also. I see you also have. Um, did you put uh, XP instead of uh, milestone? Maybe, but when you say level two, it gives you. It goes to whatever that. I see you have ten. So you had eight before. Yeah, so... If you go into manage HP, what does your fixed HP say? Or is it an option where you can put it in? It says rolled HP modifier and override yeah. HP. Oh, yeah, so I you, see. Yeah, you would have picked your not an average one, so you just put in the average or whatever you rolled into there for each level. So My one's four. got fixed HP and then yeah. modifier override. Same. That should be at 15. Okay. okay, is that what we should be at then? Well, so I, mean, I just it's different rolled, per person. I rolled my right, hit I dice. I rolled my hit die and added my constitution modifier. So I rolled it on d20 and just did that manually on override HP. Yeah, it does your um constitution automatically in D&D Beyond. Right. Yeah. Um, but how do you want to do? How are we rolling? Or we just can we take the average? Or do we have a choice? Let's just do or the do average you? this time. Uh, and then I need to. I didn't think about that in advance, so we can figure it out later. It was a cool one that um, one DM that did with us is that you both roll, like the DM rolls and the player rolls, um, and then the player who rolls gets to choose whether they take their own roll or take the DM roll. Oh, the DM that's kind of fun. Maybe we'll do that for tier three then, or tier that's three, uh, level three. Yeah, that's kind of fun. We can we can talk about it, and if anyone has any other cool ideas, we can we can go from there. All right, I'm gonna sign us off on Twitch, so you guys feel free to keep going, if you know, or chit chat or whatever you want. And just give me a sec here. Uh, <clears throat> I beefy boy. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining us for session one HP. of our Rhyme with the Frost Maiden campaign. I should have just muted these knuckleheads so they're not chit chatting in the I'm background. I'm right behind you at 20 HP. Uh, yeah, girl. We'll see what's at get the bottom it, of this it, cave uh, or where the hell our players are even at right now uh, in the next session, which will be in two weeks. Uh, same time, yeah, Sunday at 5 CT. So uh, thank you so much for joining us and have a great night.